Oh, this is going to be so much fun! An Aerosmith got it completely right. Another high quality live session. This always makes my day. It makes my day too, bro. It makes my day, I'm telling you. All day long I was looking forward to doing this with you guys again. And you know what? This is not just quality time. This is quality, quality time. Damn, I had no intention to visit YouTube today, but now I'm staying for a little while. Hi, out Marys and everyone watching. Hi, Flying We. Yeah, the uh, intentions of staying on the internet drop drastically in the summertime. Isn't that true? And also, we all know that YouTube's algorithm is on the loose. Something's wrong. The AI is out of control and nobody's really talking about it, but we all know it. What is going on with our suggestions? Just crap, just junk, just bullshit. I'm glad you're finding your way to my channel because today we are going to dive deep into another chapter of the Royal Road to Cut Magic. Section 2, Part 1. The Riffle Shuffle, Table Riffle Shuffle, In Air Enhanced Riffle Shuffle, and some fine card tricks. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you hyped? Let's roll. Odd Mario's Magic. Like and subscribe. Hey guys, how you doing? Is everything crisp? Is everything dope? Is everything the way it should be? Great sound, great visuals. I'm so glad you're tuning in. Getting started here with seven viewers on a Tuesday night. Um, half past eight Berlin time. That's summertime Germany. That's a GMT or UTC plus two. Where are you guys tuning in from? What time is it? And what are you expecting from today's live jam session? I'm telling you, this is going to be a very productive session. I am just focusing here on the Royal Road to Card Magic with this live stream right now. And what I want to do, I want to walk through the Royal Road to Card Magic, pretty improvised, uh, pretty jazzed, uh, chapter by chapter, you know, looking into the handlings, into the techniques. And then we are going to take a look at the tricks. As a matter of fact, I just read the second uh, second chapter or second section of the Royal Road to Card Magic just about right now. I took a look in, uh, at it, um, I also uh, walked through these tricks we're going to talk about today some crazy tricks um and you might be wondering uh, later on what are these tricks actually having to do with a riffle shuffle uh, that's going to be a very good question we might also talk about that i'm super hyped i'm super excited that you guys are tuning in that is really really great now um usually i'm, I'm pointing here to the in info cards and yes there in the info cards you will find all the live streams i've done so far in one playlist but i'm of course going to add there sooner or later a playlist with all these um, Royal Road to Card Magic related live streams here on my channel and um, also there is a link right now to the Patreon side to my Patreon side and if you care uh, check it out there you don't need to become a Patreon and actually to follow on pa Patreon as some of you don't know it I will do a lot of um, uh, stuff um, in the future on Patreon more personal stuff and the next video I'm gonna upload on Patreon exclusively on Patreon but not only for my patrons um, for, uh, I've got five or four patrons right now i believe um by the way guys if any of you is watching right now thank you so much for your support it really means a lot to me uh, especially uh that we are having such a crazy time here on youtube again 2019 and also in europe with the copyright directive you have been walked uh, through all of this probably on several channels if you are youtubers you know if you have your favorite channels from all over the globe you know uh, the platform is having some issues and um the world is having some if issues or is now um, getting more and more issues with the so-called um, um, revolution, um, internet revolution, you know. <laughs> so, okay. Anyways, uh, I didn't want to go, go into this topic because we're going to take a look at a Royal Road to Card Magic. I do not have a tutorial up and running on my channel on the on the riffle shuffle, um, a table riffle shuffle, because the t whole tutorial series on table work is still in the making, you know, um, if I make it. <laughs> and uh, but I have a tutorial up and running on my channel on the 
on the um, on the on the on the on the in hair in 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 air enhance riffle uh, shuffle. I just want to show you this um for a moment, guys. Um, let me show you this. Where is this? Why is it? Yeah, that's this. Oh, right. I, I just had it on already. This is the back end, by the way, of of a live stream. So I can see you chat. There's like um eight uh, folks watching right now, and um just want to show you this. I have my channel page here, and um. Here's uh, the thing that's most actual, and then there are different types of sections, of course, uploads, uh, card magic tricks, performances, card tricks, tutorials, and I got all my tutorials in one playlist, and I got some beginner playlists, some um, card magic basics, the pick a card routine, this is where the absolute bloody beginner starts, and then I have a uh, tutorial series on the basic card control techniques, catching a pinky break uh, uh, with in jokes and so on and so on. It's all in there and then there are more card magic series here, more card magic tutorials, uh, sh cutting, shuffling, flourishes, what we got here, um, uh, card tricks, uh, no limits of control, master the pass, double lifts, forces, there's a lot of material here. I'm just saying this because, because, um, YouTube has completely abandoned the subscription model, so if you subscribe to the channel and even if you hit the notification bell, chances are super high that you're not getting notified about the activities on the channel. And I've found many people finding me, um, uh, reacting, get, uh, sending me some love, you know, some comments and saying, hey, thank you for this tutorial, it's so great. Um, I wish you had more, you would do more, and I say, I actually have more, and people just don't find it. So we are living in a time right now where you guys have to make an effort, we, we all have to make an effort to really support our um, content creators on the platform um, by actually, you know, making the effort going there. <laughs> and I just wanted to let you know, if you don't know my channel, I got all this candy, all this candy up and running on my channel um, just uh, just enjoy it you know just go there if you need uh, a resource um, for learning magic which this channel is all about with special focus on card magic card handling so what we got we got it in the comments here uh, 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 um, Air, Royal Road to Card Magic is such a great book I've had it for what it feels like 30 years and it still teaches me every time I pick it up it's great isn't it it's just a it's such a it's such it's so rich it's so um, solid it's got such a body it's so rounded up um, yes uh, and it uh, for me it's all kind of, kind of a compass you know it helped me I, I'm glad I started with this book because this kind of you know um, helped me from the very very beginning to navigate uh, um, um, through this universe of possibilities magic and also card magic is right um hey dude richard ballas hey richard man awesome you tuning in this is so amazing that was so fun last time richard ballas in the house that is absolutely fantastic hope you're having a good day out marys akuma snow says akuma um, i'm having a great day today actually um uh, yeah, we got a little uh, s uh, sun coming out here finally, uh, summer in Berlin, and I'm super excited ab about this uh, series I'm doing here. And we're going to the card table in a minute. Uh, love them streams, as always. Um, Kavalet, I actually had one of your videos show up on my recommended list the, the other day. Well, maybe, maybe the algorithm, uh, the AI is picking me up but w w sooner or later. How long can, how long can that, uh, that intelligence uh, ignore me? I, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so, Richard Bellas, awesome channel. Thank you so much, Richard. Thank you so much. Guys, guys, let's go. I'm eating here, by the way. This is not candy. I'm, I'm on a heavy diet. This is a... Um, this is something else. This is a product of nature. Um, how does it call, how does it call this? Um, ingwer. Ingwer. I don't know. What is it? How is it called? Jing ginger. Um, ginger sticks. It tastes absolutely um, crazy right now. Uh, because I'm a crazy dude, I mix this with coffee. So I got at, uh, drinking coffee in the night. With ginger sticks, you know, that's insanity. This is living living the dream. So, this is my card table right now. It's completely chaotic. It is absolutely out of control. But what can you do? And by the way, we are listening right now to some uh, music. Um, it's called Windows 96, 100 Mornings. It's some kind of a great recording somebody uploaded on YouTube. And I was thinking, I don't care if my... Um, if, if my videos get monetized or claimed by third parties, I'm, I, I actually think it would be awesome if this money really goes to the people who did this record, this awesome music we're listening here right now too in the background, because rumors are, you know, I've heard it on Twitter, I saw it on Twitter, that um, now um, uh, situations occurring where people actually get copyright strikes or get claimed using music from the YouTube library. 
<laughs> that is that's that's the level of that's the level of crazy. I mean, I can't tell you. It's really it's uh, insane. So I don't I don't care. I'm listening to the music I want to listen to here. Um, going uh, going into deep into diving deep into card magic today with you guys. Are you excited? Are you ready for the for the uh, for the action? Do you have a deck of cards out? Okay, let's 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 work here with the uh, with the uh, Dalio. <clears throat> Now, thumbnail rules, you know, thumbnail rules. Let me show you this. So, this year is the visual, 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 visualization where the, the ginger numbs my tongue. That, that, I, I didn't see that coming. Oh, shit. What the fuck? Ah, blah, 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 blah. Gee, I can't eat, keep, eat, keep on eating that. Anyways. This is a bad example of a handling. This is a bad handling of the table riffle shuffle. <laughs> and it's right there here on the cover of the Royal Road Card Magic. How could that happen? Huh? Am I the first one who sees this? And what is the index finger doing here with the overhand shuffle? No, no, it doesn't really look good. No, no, no. Here's the first thing we learn. We, the first thing we learn today, just because it is written in a book and just because it's a, it's a drawing in a book, it doesn't mean it's good. It doesn't mean it's right. And just because, just because it is a, uh, it is a um, YouTube video or a, a YouTube um, stream, doesn't mean necessarily it's bad. Okay? So we, we don't have to mix those things up, okay? We have to be always very critical with whatever source we are working with, whatever comes at us, whatever the internet throws at us, whatever the we, books we are looking through, always be critical, always like, really f make up your own mind, okay? And of course, this is also true for what I'm saying. I'm always saying this, guys, this is work in progress, okay? I'm just sharing my reflections on my learning process with you hopefully this um you can benefit from this so we get into a nice uh, conversation about it this is not the final word that's all i'm saying okay but still this is not this is not right this is not this is what we try to avoid today so i'm going to show you a proper handling or at least what i think what i worked out for myself a proper handling for the table riffle shuffle also going to take a short look at the in-air riffle shuffle this is what's happening in the book and um, then we're going to take a, a look at the tricks. What do you say, guys? What do you say? So, in the chat, something's going on. Nairus Smith, I often think you deserve lots more subscribers, but one on the other side, I love the coziness of, you, of our small family. Yes, I think the same. Right now, I think the same. If we are good. I'm, I, I, I didn't want to bitch around or something, okay? We are really, really good. We are, and this is, this, is, uh, this is going somewhere, you know? Um, because it feels it feels right and um, the connection is established so we're going somewhere this is absolutely good I got a claim for using my brother's original music Richard Bellas right yeah <laughs> that's crazy what's happening here that's absolutely insane not from my brother by the way are you gonna claim from my brother's original music huh uh, those I don't get the joke uh, is it I don't get it I'm sorry I'm stupid. Um, not from my brothers, by the way, but those illustrations aren't even useful. Well, 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 uh, you know, back in the day, you must remember, this book was um, printed in 1951. Um, these illustrations here in the book, this was the only thing in Novitz of the Art had, you know, to, to make this very difficult transition from the words, the wording, the explanation of what is happening and the actual feeling and how it actually has got to look like or respectively not look like at the end. You know, I mean, this is the most difficult thing. And um, I'm paraphrasing here um, Aaron Fisher, paraphrasing Di Vernon probably. In Card Magic, we are doing very uncomfortable things with our hands, holding uncomfortable grips, uh, operate, ma making uh, uncomfortable uh, motions and operations, but yet we have to make it look like absolutely natural and easy. And if you are novice in the art and you've and you've ever uh, you've never seen this, you know, um, you've never done this. Uh, this must have been this must have been a a, a, cha uh, not, not a barrier, like really a barrier to to get going. My, I mean, today you just turn on a, a YouTube um, a YouTube and then you type in the specific technique and then you will find presentations, performance tutorials, and so on. And then you can really study 
other people's hands. Back in the days, these illustrations, they were everything they had. That's so this was really important, you know. Yes, Nairo Smith, let's let's fix your riffle shuffle today together. So Richard Beller sends his cards out as if you can learn something from me. <laughs> but we'll see, we'll see. Why I'm not a fan of the why I'm not a fan of the book. I guess there are reasons, but maybe you can give your top three, Richard. What is what what don't what, what don't you like about Royal Road Card Magic? So 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 so. Now let me let me read you something to get start when when it gets started here in this chapter. Uh, this is this is kind of funny, but first of all, I got to turn the music down a little bit on my headphones, otherwise I go crazy. So, uh, okay. Hey, Enrico Pirata, nice you tuning in. Welcome to the show. Uh, we are here, page 28 now, um, the Royal Road to Card Magic uh, section to the Riffle Shuffle. Uh, let me read the, this first section here. This is the shuffle ordinarily used by card players, but in spite of its almost universal use, it is uh, rarely done neatly or even smoothly, which is actually kind of true up until today. Uh, nearly always the cards are bent far too much and then pushed together clumsily. Yeah, So there's not an uh, not much of an elegant handling uh, around uh, by the time this book was written. In the, f in the middle of the 20th century um, and we still got the situation kind of you know the proper way of execute, uh, uh, to execute the shuffle should be acquired at the outset, not for appearances sake alone, but because it will enable you later to apply various secret maneuvers to the shuffle with ease and certainty. Here is the proper procedure. So here's the thing Here's the thing, um, what I'm always saying about um, the Royal Road to Card Magic, but uh, 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 working with books in general, if you, are, uh, if you read um, a book of a certain quality, you will find these um, bon mots, these uh, in-betweens, something, uh, these, these really, really special uh, tips. And this is one of these, you know. Um, it's not only a, a proper execution of basically any technique, in this case the riffle shuffle, is not a matter of aesthetics, that it just looks good, but it will help you later to um, to apply various secret maneuvers um, to the shuffle with ease and uh, um, s certainty. So, uh, so things here, um, the, the, the shuffle is a tool to, to mix the cards and in magic um, we we shift its function, we change it from something to mix the cards into something to actually order the cards or to um, only create the illusion of shuffling the cards and it becomes a utility tool for creating certain effects and there is a lot to apply to this basic functional technique of shuffling the cards. So the better we learn how this works from, the, from scratch, from the very beginning and the, and the better our handling is from the very beginning the easier it will be later to apply all these other techniques to it, you know? And this is not just true for the for the riffle shuffle, this is true for any card handling technique. And I would even go so far pretty much for every kind of skill you, you learn that has complex um, motions going on with micro timing. So here we go. This is chapter 228 and you got this thing. If you are open to receive it, there you go. There's no excuses no anymore, you know? And of course, this is also true for what is written in the first chapter for the overhand shuffle. And this is what I was always saying, guys. Master the overhand shuffle, master these basic shuffling techniques, and the rest will follow. The rest will follow. So, uh, case tight, well, is in the house. Good afternoon, evening, at Mary's Magic and chat family. Case tight, well, welcome to the channel. Welcome to the show. Welcome to today's uh, stream on the Riffle Shuffle. Going uh, um, to be ordering myself a copy of Royal Court to, uh, uh, on payday. Can't wait to dive in. Yeah, on Diverne. Shuffling cards is basically juggling, right? That's how I relate, relate to it. No, no, no. Uh, shuffling cards is not uh, juggling. Shuffling cards is um, it's a core foundation of card magic. Okay, that's the that's that's the motor. Okay, and um, juggling that's cardistry. <laughs> Oh my god, I said it! I'm one of these old magicians that thinks cardistry is juggling with cards! <laughs> uh, 
Uh, the the Chris Ramsey fan community is going to 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 bury me for this one. <laughs> so, eating nuts here. Use cases. Things we will later add to the riffle shuffle. Guess where we find the most? Guess where we find a lot of material? Of course, any expert at the card table. Like there is, there is uh, tons of material, really tense material in the expert of the card table by Ertness here on false shuffling, on um, blind shuffling, blind riffles and cuts. Ertness system, he Ertness built a whole system of introduces these techniques, these combinations between blind shuffling and cutting as systems. So just here from the pictures, just just check this out. Look at this picture here. Wait. Let me get let me get, bring it this here closer. Look at this. Look at this. And also this. These two. Look at this. And this, just compared to this and this. Is this the same thing? Actually, are we talking about the same thing here? Or what, is go what the hell is going on? Yeah? Now, what I'm going to show you now is, going, is kind of a blend, a mixture between those two approaches. And the one is a, is a very open one, um, a more loose one. and. Erdnay's version is a more close one, a more, a more gambler, gambler's uh, kind of thing. So when we when we look at Erdnay's, we got something like this. Yeah, very close. I c something like this, very close here, and the corners. And when we look at the Royal Road to Card Magic, we got something like this, where we have the cards really open and then f falling, almost like the pages. Really, really different different feeling to it and what I'm approaching here or what I am trying to always try to manage is to get a situation where I basically combine both elements which turns into something I just showed you yeah this would be the version I prefer to for me it's the best of both worlds and I really gave it a lot of thought and a lot of practice to kind of getting there just with the perspective of applying or, or using this later on with all these in all these different use case scenarios so for me i found it very very helpful to keep the index finger the index yeah to keep it to keep it curled in and leave it out of the game out of the race all of the time so as you can see, I'm not working like this. I'm working like this. I got my index fingers curled in when I, when I, pretty much all the time I'm working here with the cards. This is something. It's the first thing I wanna wanna recommend you guys. Once again, this is just my take on it. I think it just looks much cleaner, and also it helps me better in operating here on the table, navigating here on the table, and I have this this habit now that I'm just bringing my index fingers out when I really want them when I really need them for anything now you can if you're a complete beginner with this shuffle you can uh, you can break this down in three phases breaking the packs in half and getting into pole position for the actual riffling riffle of the sh sh of the cards um, of the shuffle of the cards with with them cards idealistically interlacing one by one and then the n motion of pushing them together and kind of squaring them up. So we got phase one, breaking them, phase two, r shuffling them, and phase three, bringing them together. And of course, the practice goal is always to get this into one smooth motion, yeah? To get it like this. And then it's kind of up to you how you want to play it. Do you want to play it a little more uh, sloppy or do you want to perform it extra extra cool with, with absolute with an absolute clean um, performance of everything also you can decide whether you want to go with them cards you know going a little slower so that the 
the, the, the unlocker can see them cards interlace or if you want to do it kind of in, in, a, in a fast motion where the cards kind of snap in together something like this frap okay we're talking here a frr to a frap yeah so it's frr to a frap frap yeah but of course you will experiment with both ways anyways and i do recommend to to work your way from uh, from a slow very clean execu execution to something faster here's how you get started with the best grip which i found out for my hands curl your index fingers in bring your thumbs together move them towards the cards and then just swing your other fingers around and then you are in the right grip for this whole shuffle okay something like this in my opinion now this is basically you're holding the cards basically like in a, in a grip for an um for a hindu shuffle something like this or it's pretty much the same thing as the overhand grip just from from the other side and of course you mirror this grip with your with your other hand that's the first notion with the with the index curled in the the second fingers they meet here with a little triangle at the center of the outer long side from the magician's perspective just do as the thumb, thumbs do at the inner short side from the magician's perspective and then another key is that the index finger and in my case look at my, my look at my short uh, pinkies that the pinkies then support the the corners here so if I expose the grip from from this now it would look like something like this okay so my pinkies they are here nice and stabilizing the corners now of course when I got the grip here I break the pack in half and then I separate the packages and in this case now and I would recommend to start with this and to focus on this I'm pulling the lower portion to to the right and the top portion to the left and the uh, the right hand by the way is my my dominant hand so just for you lefties out there buckle in your index finger thumbs to the center of the long short side third second fingers to the center of the short sides and then just like that and break the packages in half and when you form then a little triangle like this in front of you a v that points to to your direction you pretty much got it done now when you do the earthness version or what is what is uh, uh, displayed in the earthness version you would you would be you would be going with the thumbs with the tip of your thumbs pretty much at the at the outer ends or at the um, inner ends here of the short of the long short sides um, I'm sorry of the long sides to pretty much bend the cards right there in this position and there's a lot of pressure immediately happening yeah you with me with this guys so you're bending the cards here and in my hands this pushes the corners here the outer right and outer left corners pretty much into the base of my thumb and I also I need to really stabilize the cards with my other fingers here and in this position you will find it now pretty controllable to have them cards interlace now I don't know if you can see this from your position but this doing this from this banding position it really it really gives you a lot of control over the cards with this band here so this is the closed version this is something to practice having the cards fall from your from your fingertips uh, from the tip of your thumb like this see this notion as you would do for the practice for the in hair riffle shuffle 
The same notion is happening here on the table. However, in the Royal Road to Card Magic, we got a little bit different scenario. We have all, as you can see here, all the fingers here at the outer long side. Respect, yeah. And um, I, I, I don't want to have it so much. I don't like this so much. So I keep my, my, my pinky fingers here at these corners, which limits me with how, how deep I go into into the whole grip here and I like kind of stay with my thumbs pretty much here in the center of the of the long sides can you see that this is where I am now in this position I can actually lift both packages without bending them cards like the pages of a book, so to say. And if you give this a try now, you will find that you do not need re actually really gripping the cards to, to, to pick them up. It's just that your second and third, second and third fingers, pretty much here at the outer third of the short side, let me show you this here, just rests there, fingertips, just rest on the floor. Pinky stabilizes the whole thing again at the short side, like that. Index is curled in. And then you can lift the cards up to a certain point, however. See that? Let me show you this from here. And in this grip also, the base of the thumb here, the base of the thumb where the I don't know, the, the thumb connects with the base of the thumb here. This is the natural corner where the inner right corner fits in. Looks like this, look at this. Can you see this? There. It's like, as if, as if a human hand, or as respectively my hand, was designed for this shit. <laughs> Okay, so this is how the table sees it. Okay, there, there we go. Boom. And now you lift them up without bending them and then you can give them a little bend as you would if you go deep in there where you can't really lift the cards. Of course you can lift the cards in the same manner, but then you would also lift, and this is now the key moment, the key momentum, you would also lift the base of the thumb from the table. And I highly recommend you to not do that because you want to have all what's happening just happening out of your fingers and you want to, them cards really to jump off of, from the tip of your thumb, which runs pretty much parallel to the long side and it's not lifted up like it's displayed on the cover of the Royal Road to Card Magic right here this this thing something like this I don't even know how people do this anymore so when you're in this position instead of going for an open complete open thing and also instead of going into something extremely closed here like in the Royal Road to Card Magic you go for a for the in between for the middle okay and then you lift up the cards like the pages of a book you give them a little bend and et voila you are in control of the cards as if you would do it really really closed but still you have this open breathing um wipes going on as if you would do really do a very open uh, open shuffle and at the beginning of the practice, it is really frustrating to keep the, the bases of the thumbs pretty much at the table all the time. That is absolutely frustrating, but I would highly recommend you guys doing this. It will take longer to be able to execute a proper shuffle, but if you have mastered it once and if you get Fami fami familiar with it and if it gets cozy 
and you you at a certain point you don't you don't feel this, this difference anymore you will be enabled to really perform a really beautiful looking looking and really controlled table riffle shuffle what do you say to that does this make sense do you have any suggestions are you blown away right now do you have any questions and i'm wondering how i'm going to break this down <laughs> in a tutorial at one point yeah so shortly recap phase one breaking them in half phase two and phase three phase three is basically from this position pushing them like this and this into this position and then it's your Ring fingers again with your index, which keep on buckled in, coming to push them, to push inside, and your thumb coming to push outside. And if you do this at the same time, this will square up your cards, and then you can go for another round. Bang, one, two, bang. Look at this. Look at this. Isn't that, isn't that something you just want to learn <laughs> so i'm missing music here on my headphones i'm counting 41 playback so far with an average view duration of eight minutes and 48 seconds currently 10 folks watching it's a privilege everybody tuning in here today on the channel we are already now discussing the riffle shuffle table riffle shuffle a combination, a blend between the Royal Road to um, Card Magic version and the Expert at the Card Table version by Erdnaves, right? And we focused on a very clean, a very good looking aesthetic, but very controlled hand handling at the same time to get this right from scratch, because this is the first thing we we got, we got to learn in the Royal Road to Card Magic here that we have to do, to learn the the real deal first before we fake it, right? And the better, the cleaner our handling is with the basic techniques, it will be more easier later on to adapt and to um, add these false use cases, you know, these these sleight of hand things, you know. Okay, now let's uh, let's see what's what's happening in the chat. What's going on here? No, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to show you this again. But I forget this to turn this out. Ah, there, something going on in the chat. So flying, we reverse sloppy. Yeah, but do you do you prefer sloppy because that's the only thing you can do? Huh? Huh? Maybe that's the case. Maybe that's why you prefer sloppy. Can you do it clean, cleanly, clean? Are you under control, or are you not under control? And you say it's it's. I wanted to have it. I wanted to be like that. <laughs> uh, can you upload part four, classic pass? Um, yeah, well, uh, we do this later. We do this now step by step. And I already, however, I have a whole tutorial series on the past and also I did a live stream on the past. Go to my channel page, you would find everything there. Uh, thank you, says Enrico Perala. I don't even know how long these comments are read. Carter is fun though. Uh, yo yoing let me to courtesy courtesy let me to slide and that let me here so you know it's all about what you do with it Lord, that's right so uh, case that well in case you uh, you didn't die yet well <laughs> um, that's right and of course I was just joking what I'm you know whatever whatever you love doing what whatever you choose to express yourself um, it, it that's that's all right with me you know and everybody who I don't know who has a problem with somebody doing something beautiful with, with things, being artistic with something because it's not his or her piece of cake? What the fuck? Don't waste time with these people. The riffle shuffle is actually something that took me longer because I, I'm not... Um, practicing on the table so much and because I didn't see myself um, in too many um, scenarios working on the table I wasn't motivated really motiv I wasn't really motivated to um, 
to um, put a lot of effort into it. But quite a while now, for quite a while now, I'm practicing here. Um, uh, um, I'm practicing on the table then though, because I came across some things I want to do. And also for my YouTube channel now for these live streams, I found, uh, I found a, 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 um, a meaningful use for it. So I started practicing. How long? It's always a time of, um, of devotion. It's always a matter of how much things you do parallel. Um, never do too much at the same time, but f focusing only on one thing is also crazy and in some cases not uh, counterproductive, counterproductive, I guess. So it really depends. And it also depends on what you want to do with it, on what level you want to perform later on. And now when we later go, when we go into the tricks a little bit later here in this live stream, you will see that um, you don't need to execute um, a super clean shuffle in order to perform the tricks. You know, it's all, it's always a question. Aim for the best, and then um, work with what w w work with what you got up until the point you um, you got to go out working. You know, um, that's that's what I'm saying. So let's let's turn on some music here. Why is there no music? Mm, let's let's go back to. Let's go back to some music. What, 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 what? Let's do this. So, 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 so. I'm wondering if Richard Bellis is still with us. Richard, are you still there? So let's let's take let's recap this for a moment, and then and then I want to want to talk about the in hands in air rifle shuffle. So buckle in your index fingers, get into the right grip. Break the cards apart. Get into your position. Lift them up with your thumbs without the other fingers actually really grabbing the cards. Resting as loosely as possible on the table. Keep the bases of your thumbs also on the table. Lift them cards up, give them a little bend, bending them against the knuckles of the index fingers. And then have them cards interlace one by one. Bang. Pretty much in the same grip. Push them together. And then with this motion, square them up. And you're ready for another round of the table ruffle. Bang. What a nice, what a nice way of shuffling cards. There you go. So now, let's talk about about the enhanced in air riffle shuffle. This baby here, yeah, something like this. Let me, let me get the camera a little bit out here. Sharpen it here. Okay, fair enough. This baby here. Now, I've got an in-depth tutorial up and running on my channel and you guys want to check this out if you don't know it or if you haven't seen it already. It's there with the five most valuables of flourishing cards or something right there on my channel page, right? This is how it looks. And with this, it is also very easy to control the top as well as the bottom card, if not a tiny stock couple of cards yeah on top or at the bottom of the deck which in the royal road of card magic is requested for a couple of tricks and this is really the easiest way of using these shuffling techniques as a um, um, as a utility tool for card manipulation or for card control and if you perform an in-air or enhanced riffle shuffle, it will work because 
This is something laymen really enjoy watching. And really enjoy being performed. So, also this can be can be taught in, in three phases. The first phase of breaking the packs in half. So again we have this rolling rolling motion with the thumb here up to the half and then we have this package fall onto the other fingers here of the other hand. We rotate the cards upwards and catch them with our thumb and then we mirror the right hand image like this. This is the grip we are holding with both hands now. And then we bend the cards with our thumbs against the knuckles of our index fingers. It's just like that. And then again we have them cards interlace one by one while rolling over our fingertips which brings us into this grip where we place the thumbs over the part where the cards have interlaced and they are clipped between the other fingers respectively index finger and the other three fingers now we bend the cards we extend our index fingers and then we release pressure to both sides with both hands and have them cards fall into our other fingers. That's the enhanced in hair riffle shuffle explained from one perspective. Bang. So Flying Wii has been has been censored here again. <laughs> Why? Flying Wii, what did you what did you type? And this is the version of of the riffle shuffle in air. Uh, this is there are there are two main techniques to basically completely fake this shuffle. I'm not going into this here right now because these are very difficult techniques, and I would be crazy. teaching them not just because they are very very extremely valuable because faking this shuffle is a, a weapon of mass destruction but also I couldn't actually <laughs> I wouldn't know where to start because I have mastered this technique myself yet and I'm never I would never teach something that I'm still understanding in its in its basic structure, you know. That would be insane. Wow, the music is very dramatic now on the headphones. So dig in the music. Before we before we go into the tricks of today, my name is Ot Marius and we are practicing cards. Walking through the Royal Road of Card Magic. Doing this now for about 47 minutes. Part 1, Section 2, The Riffle Shuffle of the Royal Road to Card Magic. Let's give it a little bit of contemplation, a little bit of practice time, and then we go into the tricks. What do you say, guys? Cabalet is asking 
I have a real hard time with this. The cards get really sloppy when I'm riffling the cards from the right hand to the left. Practice like this. You have the right grip, like this. Your left hand comes, or your right hand, depending where you start. I'm starting with my right hand here, kind of in this grip. And then I just practice to have them cuts jump from my fingertip one by one. Can you see this motion of the thumb here? I'm really diving deep into the cards. You want to, you can do this to get started, but of course, the more power you the, you get into you, into your thumb, the more muscles you build up here, the solar section, the more you will be enabled to really come from the side here, to really roll over the cards with the, with the thumb running parallel to the to, to the edges of the cards, right? And of course, you can mirror this and practice this from the other side. It's like, <laughs> yeah, right? It's like bodybuilding, man. It's like bodybuilding. And then when you've done this for a little time, try to just to get it into this motion and then repeat that motion. Yeah, so you go, bang, and repeat. Rotate the cards into your hand and then the same package, rotate it back. And then you can do it from the other side. You can try it the other way around. And then you can alter alter alternate the hands. Bang, bang, and practice, you know. <laughs> step by step. And then it might be time for the first time to do this. It's gonna be a mess. Don't you worry. And if you have problems, just push them together at first. Just push them together. Don't push yourself too hard. Step by step. One step after another. Go here. Push them together. Very nice. Shader's Magic is in the house. Shader's Magic. Hey, what's up? How are you doing? I'm just showing here. Cavalette some practice tabs on how to master the in-air, in-hands, riffle shuffle. Bring some other moves here in between just to get my hands a little loose because now after repeating all the same motions of course these are only one some muscle parts of the hand are getting especially motivated <laughs> so in order to loose up the hand bring some other moves here in some backhand fans for example some classic thumb fans some classic fans getting some different motions in here some dribbles maybe cool well I'm working on my second deal and in the car on the way home from Legoland <laughs> that's great <laughs> But how do you drive a car and practice a second deal at the same time? Are you driving a Tesla? Or are you sitting in the back in your baby stool while your mother is driving? <laughs> so back to the table here with the riffles. That's what I wanted to do.
Oh, this felt really good to give my hands a little bit of uh, something else to do. And then going back here to the table riffles. That felt really good. And now I'm doing him really loose, getting here into really sloppy mode. Not trying to control the cuts too much and everything goes everywhere. And all them cuts go in places. Doesn't really matter. I want to get a feel for the cards here at this point. Before I push myself back into a rigid mode where I really do control the cards as the best I can, you know. That's great. So, Shadow's magic is doing God, is, is doing some crazy thing right now. He's sitting in a car, driving back in California from Legoland. Probably with a smartphone or with a laptop, watching this chat, watching this this live stream, chatting like a crazy person and at the same time working on his double lift <laughs> that's insane so Any magicians in Legoland? So Flying Wii is um, hitting us all here with something very useful. Riding combining and uh, the in-hand riffle shuffle and the overhand control shuffle. So it's my favorite way to control a card in any position you want. Yes, it's really effective to use these both, b b to combine these techniques in order to um, create the illusion. So you have, um, what, what, I don't know, I, I just I just go to the cards a little bit here and then I say, you know what, I'm going to, um, I'm going to, um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to force the, uh, the, let's, let's say, let's, let's, let's say, mm, let's say the, let's say the tree of diamonds. Let's, let's, let me, let me, let me find the, let me, let me find the, the tree of diamonds. Yeah, why, yeah, why, yeah, why. So, you, you lose a card in the deck. Any card, the three of diamonds, spectator's card, and then you shuffle the cards, and the three of diamonds is really lost in the deck. Nobody knows where it is. Shuffle the cards one more time, and of course you don't bring any attention to the shuffling of the cards. You shuffle them even with this amazing in and riffle shuffle, and then you even give them one cut, bang, bang, and then the three of diamonds is right there on top of the deck. Are you kidding me? That is not normal. That is not normal. We all need medical attention right now. Bao Huang said hello from Vietnam. Greetings from Berlin. Back to Vietnam. How are you doing? I'm glad you're tuning in. We are in the middle here of a session working with the book The Royal Road to Card Magic. We are on page 20, 28, working on a shuffling technique. The in hands and in air riffle shuffle and also the table shuffle. I'm sorry, the tree of clubs. That's the tree of clubs. I'm I'm uh I'm I'm stupid. Jasper Jones, what did I do? Tree of spades, right? I'm always I'm this is so it's one of my greatest 
I'm not with the cards, man. So once again, we have a card. The two of this is the two of spades, right? The two of spades. The two of spades. So this is what um Flying V suggests. We got the two of spades. We shuffle the cards. And the two of spades is no nowhere to be found in the deck. Two of spades. And we shuffle it in all kinds of ways. And we cut the cards in all kinds of ways, right? This is one I love so much. Now I'm getting a little bit crazy here. One more cut to the table. What do, did we have? The two of spades, right? And, and, two of spades. Woohoo! On top of the deck. Very easy, yeah? Huh? It's very easy. Just have the top card fall. No? On top of the deck. Yeah? That's as simple as it is. Yeah? Two spades. Now let me show you the let me show you the easiest way of forcing a card. Okay, I'm, sh I'm shuffling now. You say stop anytime. Say stop anytime. Come on. You gotta say stop though. Stop right there. That's right. That's your card. That's absolutely cool. So, here we go. Now, we cut the cards to any position. Bang, bang. And now I lost it. I lost it. I lost it. I'm telling you, I lost it. Did I lose it? I lose it. Bang. There it goes. Yeah! That's crazy. But of course, that's just an illusion. But how can it be the two of spades when it's actually a king of hearts, right? Oh my god. Because the, the two of spades is right here, right there in the center of the deck. Yeah? Yeah, it's some nice music. It's practice time. We're practicing right now some cut control. We completely, we completely abandoned our course again. The starship is abandoning its course. We're jumping through time and space, just as if we were flying the discovery. <laughs> Look, any card, three of, it's a disgust, three of clubs, it doesn't really work with this here in this area, probably not, three of clubs. There it goes, right? Placing it into the center of the pack and yet it comes jumping back to the top. Three of clubs. Come on. You can do it. Woohoo! See, this is always what's happening. It only took us 45, after 45 minutes, we completely, we just wanted to practice a little bit. And now, I'm just doing random stuff. I'm just random. Jasper Jones, yes, Jasper Jones, I love those telly hoes. I just got a blue and a red bag and the gaff deck. Yes, those telly hoes, they are wonderful. They're just wonderful. Okay, guys, what do you think? What do you think? Like, I'm, I'm having the express impression now that when I don't have my, my little sh shit face in the, in the left corner, in the right corner of this video, that more people are watching and as soon as I show my face everybody goes like oh my god this man is so old <laughs> but there's another very nice there's another very nice type of playing cards and these are these now the so-called the so-called look at this 
It's not a beautiful deck of cards. So let me give those cards a little bit of a shuffle. And then let's cut the cards right here on the table. How was this trick? How was it's such a beautiful trick? It's right here in the Royal Road to Card Magic. How was it? That's right. That's right. So I have these cards shuffled and I just give them one more shuffle, just like that. Just one nice shuffle and one nice cut, right? Let me see, is this a shuffle deck of cards? This seems to be a shuffle deck of cards. Check it out. This is a shuffle deck of cards, right? Anyways, so, one more cut, bang. And then, I do give these cards to the spectator. And I say to the spectator, while I turn my back, I say, my dear spectator, deal a certain amount of cards, a random amount of cards, onto onto the table now not too, too not too many but not too less let's say something between the 3 and the 12 anybody any spectator how many cards do you want to have uh, dealt to the to the table anyone the first one who types in the number not too small not too what do you say here on the royal road to card magic like between three, three, let's say three and ten. You have a choice between three and ten. That's your choice. Anybody? Nobody wants to interact with me here right now while I'm learning the trick? Thirteen. I said from 1 to 12, from 3 to 12. Seven, we go with seven. That's the nice. Now I would not, I would not even know as a magician how many cards you decided because Evie would now take the cards and it would deal down seven cards onto the table. So Evie, you know my spectator, it, you have the cards. And I have my back turned and I would say to you, to, to, please come on, you have to, to, to count them down uh, silently so that I can, you know, count with them. So you would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Deal now seven cards, right? I'm, I'm just reading what's happening next. So now you're supposed, Iwi, to look at the card that's that's there on top. Look at the card that's there on top. Memorize it. Show it to everybody else. Okay, guys, you gotta memorize this card now. Can you do that? Memorize this card. Card goes back, and then Iwi, please put all the other cards back on top of there. There you go. Right, Iwi, you still got the cards. Now I turn around, but you still keep the cut the deck, huh? So Evie, now I ask you to riffle shuffle the cards and to cut them. I do this first with an in-hand riffle shuffle, just like we did it. This is a general shuffle. You would do this in a live performance. And then I cut a card and I complete the cut. And when doing this once again, I'm just doing a decent riffle shuffle here. And then I cut the cards once again. And this is what Evie would do right now. Here's the thing. Check this out. This is a completely shuffled deck of cards. I'm so <laughs> I looked at the card. How can I? How can I be so crazy? How can I be so crazy? But would it have worked? It was the five of spades, right? 
it would have worked in a crazy in a crazy fashion actually. So we have to repeat the trick. That's that's bananas. That was bananas. Now I I was trying to perform the trick for you guys. That's in the Royal Road to Card Magic. But I did look at the card. Which is crazy. Anyways. Of course the spectator wouldn't have looked at the card. That is the five of spades, you know. And even if I show you the card. Here in the, in the into the camera. I could see it because I got, it, I got the camera right in front of me. So I, I can't perform the trick. <laughs> without, without it being <laughs> completely stupid. Anyways. So, after the procedure we did, I now would, as a spectator, perform some kind of, you know, finding the card thing. And in the Royal Road to Card Magic, they say I would have a, the spectator grip my wrist or grip the wrist of the spectator. And the spectator had to think about the card. And then I would find the card, which is the Five of Spades. That's the trick. It's a revelation trick. Okay. Do you guys know how this works? Yokoman0581 is in the house. Do you know how this works, guys? It is. It is. Mirror of, mirror of the mind. This is... Actually, kind of very nice trick, I believe. It's really easy to set up. Here's the setup. Here's how you do it. Okay, let me let me make this sharp here. Okay, okay. So we got uh, we we taking the spades. Any any suit doesn't really matter. We're taking the spades here. Taking all the spades out of the deck. Is he Ariel? I have no idea. I tried to perform a trick and while I do, I realize that it makes no sense. That it's completely pointless to, to, to perform a trick like this uh, with the camera. <laughs> so, what we're doing right now is we are walking through the Royal Road of Car Magic in a live stream series and we are now part one chapter or section two and um i'm just showing you guys a trick called in the, from the book uh 35 on page 35 34 and 35 called mirror of the mind so the preparations of these tricks are the following we have all them cards of any suit one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one two three and um it really doesn't matter in which order they are. We keep the ace, however, here for a better explanation reasons on top of the deck. So we got them on top of the deck. Now, what we would do is we would um, shuffle them cards once and then um, hopefully controlling the ace on top of the deck. And then we would have a shuffle deck of cards and then we have a spectator dealing down a card a small card number of cards that ranks between 1 and 12 or 1 and 1 and 12 let's say 1 and 12 or I would say 3 and 12 or something and we said we got, we went for the 7 now it's uh it's it's going to be a space but a random state so we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and oh, let's take it the 8 card now this would be ha happening in the hands of a spectator. Me as a, I, the performer, I would just turn my back. So the spectator now memorizes the card. And this is a free choice. There's a tremendous delay in the chat section, just to let you know, he says. With, uh, the, the flying Wii says with tremendous uh, delay. Okay, this happens. Anyway, so we got the four. So what just happened? Yeah, the, the, the crazy thing just happened. So I'm now I'm explaining trick. The four, this spectator would memorize the four, place his back, place all the other cards uh, on top of there. And due to the laws of physics, this would be our ace of spades. Or any other spades here, doesn't really matter, as a key card. So the ace next to the, on top of the four of spades. And that's what we got. Four of spades, ace of spades. And now... We ask the spectator 
to perform a riffle shuffle. Any riffle shuffle, just a riffle shuffle, and to cut, to cut the cuts, really, to, to really give them a cut. Then we ask the spectator to perform another riffle shuffle, and actually really performing a cut. Now the cards are spread out, face up. And as you can see here, the key card stays in position. So what we got here is this situation. See that? Ace to the fourth spade. However, since the spectator is shuffling, uh, sh sh shuffling the cards and cutting the cards, they could be a huge gap between the key card and the selection. So the whole thing could look something like this. Okay? But whatever happens, the selection will always be the next spade right from the, in a, in a, in a clockwise manner from the key card, from the ace of spades. And then it's just a matter of presenting the effect, playing the magic. There is this, um, there's this effect where you could do this clicking sound. Let me turn the sound down and let me show you this clicking sound. You notice? This clicking sound, and with this clicking sound here, you can uh, you can pretend to work with a lie detector or something, Dict or with a, with a, with a Geiger sailor with something detecting the card, or you can have um, the spect feeling the pulse of the spectator and going with your hand over it, and then you finding it, and oh okay, I can feel your pulse going faster and stuff like that, you know, and finding the card. Now, this is a trick that is strongest with a um. Um, no, no, it's not strong. It's with a given deck. This is a, this is this trick is is strong because the spectator is really genu genu genuinely uh, is really shuffling the cards, and because the spectator is shuffling the cards with this riffle shuffle and actually cutting the cards the effect of the cards really getting mixed is super super strong so how could there be a key card involved you know without even the spectator knowing the principle of the key card it is a mixed deck of cards and the selection of the card happens with the spectator not even looking at the cards and the the choice of the card is really free so it's a free choice any card, okay, like this, this is what's happening, and then the cards are getting cut like this, shuffled like this, cut like this, shuffled like this, and cut like this. And how the hell should the, 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 the magician now know the card, or find the card? It is really intriguing. And I have a, a trick on my channel let me see. I believe it is. Uh, it is a. Um, it is a subscriber special. I'm going to find this now for you guys. There it is. This one is it. Um, a seven a beginner card trick. Of two years, it got only 800. Uh, it was what uh, 1,500 subscribers. Uh, thank you, a giveaway. So it's a, a similar trick with the spectator doing th some things, but it is something that I actually found um, spectators having um, figured out. Then there were two mathematicians and two uh, uh, two very smart guys at the table, and they they kind of you know they grasped the idea from the beginning and then they wanted to know it and then they, they re-engineered it and they actually figured out the secret um, to, their, to their own um, surprise. Um, they were very proud of it. Um, no hard feelings because it's really a simple trick, basically. 
But this is something that that cannot be traced back because the shuffles are genuine, the cuts are genuine, and basically everything is happening in the hands of the spectator. So this is a really, really, really strong card revelation, actually. Don't underestimate this. It's absolutely beautiful. However, of course, you need a spectator who knows how to perform a, a riffle shuffle. You know, does not need to be a riffle shuffle in air, but one in hands. That's the only, that's the only uh, problem with it. Akuma Snow says, just got off work early now. I can chill the entire stream. Well, that sounds great, man. Um, we are kind of here in the, we're in the middle of it here right now. Uh, let me check this out. We are with 14 people viewing um, for one hour and 20 minutes in the middle of the Royal Road to Card Magic. I just embarrassed myself again by trying to perform a trick which makes no sense performing in this format here. And I just didn't realize it. And everybody was like watching me. And it's like, what is this idiot doing? <laughs> but that was kind of funny, I guess. Um, and then I explained the trick. And I realized um, that this is a much better version of a trick. I explained in detail an older video for a subscriber special celebrating 1,500 subscribers on my channel two years ago. Today, my channel has about um, 5,800 um, subscribers. Um, with numbers really, really slowly growing, uh, because I have, I have, I have a really terrible May. The Mays are always terrible with the YouTube algorithm. It's always goes down like crazy. But what can you do? What can you do? Right? So I just got my first um, super chat. First super chat from Akuma Snow. Thank you so much for that. That almost one dollar. It's what is it? Yeah. Thank you so much. That this really means a lot to me. It's the first super chat I get on on on, on all of my um uh, live streams, and I, I never really pushed this or something. I didn't even know it was working. So yeah, I'm super excited. I'm super happy. T totally cool. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And also Ivan is in the house. Man, there's something going on. A lot of folks are shuffling in. Ivan, hello. Hey, I just uh, tried it. It works. Yeah. Have you heard of level one? Le level one? I don't know. Please be more concrete. Getting, uh, is it a new trick? Something new? Something new in the magic community or something random? Getting it from my mailbox, I can was no, no worries. By the way, guys, um, <coughs> I've got all my live streams. If you like this format, it's to, if this helps you practicing, because this is also kind of the idea to make this quality, quality time. I've got in the info cards here um, a, a playlist with all the streams I ever did. With some some with topics, some just random, and of course, very soon I will do a playlist with all the Royal Road to Card Magic live streams, and maybe one playlist with all the 2019 live streams, and so on, and so on. And of course, I've got a link to my Patreon site, which I would uh, really um, uh, appreciate if you guys check this out. You don't need to become a Patreon and make a financial commitment there in order to follow me on Patreon. Um, but if you sign in there, I will um, uh, upload more personal things um, there in the future, which will be also viewable for the public and not only for patrons, but patrons get some special privileges, of course, um, <clears throat> despite the, f the factor of um, supporting me financially and doing something really, really good, you know. Thank you so much. Um, so, uh, Vernon Ursenbach writes, it's nice to see you again. Using a key cut like this with spectator cutting and shuffling the cards could be a nice, uh, convincing start to a much larger trick. Yes, and we are going to probably at one point talk, uh, uh, do a whole um, um, session about key card, the key card principle, or maybe even... Um, more sessions because the great thing about the key card principle is that it can be that it can be used so much more efficient than just for this for this one card trick everybody knows you know uh, um, your uncle's card trick 
um, this beginner card trick everybody knows with the key card. Um, and the crazy thing about it is that key cards, um, that the key card principle can be extremely deceptive um, and even produce uh, um, confusion within uh, for magicians. Um, and as you guys know, I'm pretty much a uh, slight of fan focused uh, guy. I just love this so much. Um, I had my mind blown away with these principles like this, like simple math mathematical principle or keycard principle where um, performers that integrated it uh, cleverly with a little bit of sleight of hand in there, they completely fooled me. And I was like, and what kind of slides are they using that I don't know? This is so crazy. <laughs> and it's like keycard or uh, a crimp or whatever, you know, and it's this blend of different techniques. Um, that that make the stuff so strong. But of course, we are here in the second uh, um, chapter of the Royal Road, or in the first part, in the se second second section of the Royal Road to Card Magic. And you can see they introduce the novices of the art form to um, basic principles, and also you know um, f um, force them or push them at the very beginning to to practice these really basic and really fundamental shuffling. And um, cutting techniques, and and that's the prep, I think the deductive concept of this book, right? So um, these tricks are actually rather easy to perform. Um, you don't need to have you don't need to uh, to have mastered the uh, riffle shuffle a uh, hundred percent to get this going to perform this, and still this offers uh, the novices of the art form a very very strong effect. Something that I would actually now I. I never did this and now that i worked at this a little bit i'm thinking this is actually something yeah now that i know it why not give it a try the other day you know because this is this happens uh, to me a lot um that people that know me the friends of mine they say do you know a new trick and it's like because you don't you don't learn a new trick every week you don't do this you know Uh, yeah, I remember Vernon Wurzenbach. You've been driving your car while listening to to what I, what what I'm doing, right? Yeah, uh, it's insane. And I guess I'm sorry. You don't have you didn't have the beautiful music I'm listening to right now. Listen to this. Okay, let's let me let let's let's try let's try another car trick here. Akuma Snow, thank you once again for. For the super chat, I really, really appreciate it. You're rocking awesome. Uh, awesome card gimmick. I'm just getting your uh, the answer of Akuma Snow. Awesome card gimmick. Don't use gimmicks, but this is awesome. Check it out. Okay, I will do. I will. Uh, I will. Um, I will check it out. I will, as a matter of fact, write this right now here in my Royal Road to Card Magic. For me, the gimmick of all gimmicks, and I don't need more, uh, with the sleight of hand I know, and with the repertoire of tricks that is out there in the world and easily available. Um, the, the gimmick of the gimmick for me is Tour <laughs> by David Stone. And then, of course, yeah, what else? There are some other stuff. Um, if you want to do a little fire and smoke show, the basic, basic things. Keep it simple. Don't carry too much things around, you know? Because coins are heavy, you know? And then there is all these um, thumbnails. You gotta hide. So, 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 back to the Royal Road to Card Magic. Oh, right, I need a pen. Okay, and I got... Let's take another deck out here. Oh my god, the mu music is now annoying me. So, let's take another deck out here. Let's uh, let's work with the uh, Heritage series. So, um, I need a pen and I need a paper. All right. Or I need another deck. I do this like this. Now a little bit of improvising here. Okay, I got this deck. Keep this here. 
So let's let's uh, deal down. Yes, that's correct. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Correct? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. One, two, three, four, five, six. This goes out. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Correct? One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, thirteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, I've got two mo two cards in my hands, and this is because I have a Joker here, which goes out. Where's the other Joker? Okay, guys. I want to I want to integrate you. Uh, let me see if I can if I can uh, perform if we, if we can perform this if we can do this uh, 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 prompt to run to impromptu run to. Okay, guys, um, I got a I got a pile here with um with the ace of uh, diamonds with the jack of hearts with the king of diamonds and with the seven of spades uh, seven of clubs. You say spades and clubs. I'm such an idiot. Clubs. Anyone, the one who's first, goes first. We got a super delay, I know. Which pile goes first? First pile to work with. Which pile goes first? Ace of diamonds? Jack of hearts, seven of clubs, king of diamonds. Crazy challengers, kind of in a hurry. Just want to drop a quick hi. Hopefully everything is going good and best of luck with the rest of the practice session. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Crazy challengers for dropping in and saying hi. <coughs> 13 guys watching, learning a card trick right now, which I'm trying to perform right now with your interaction, with a little variation for this format. I don't know if it works. Fort, King of Diamonds, Fort. What is Fort? Flying V, Fort. Yokoman858 has given an answer I can work with. We got this delay, guys, but you are on a run now. You're running now for the right answer. Yokoman, King of Diamonds. King of Diamonds did the first one. Okay, um, you see what I'm doing. This is the King of Diamonds. Well, let me go here, and I got your thing. Comments here. King of Diamonds, first one. Then we have the seven of clubs, second one. And then we have the ace of diamonds right here. This is right. Yeah. Which leaves the jack of hearts, the last pile. Put it here. It was your choice, guys. Let's recap this here. I'm, I'm, I'm not touching the cards here. At this point, I'm not catching up. You can see in the chats we have the we have the king of diamonds, seven of clubs, the king of the, uh, and the ace of diamonds, and then the last with the seven of uh, with the queen of clubs. Yeah, no, no, it was reverse. Anyways, it was the correct order. You guys decided that order, okay? It was your decision. I didn't have any influence or not. It's right there. You can read it right there, there, there. King of diamonds, seven of clubs, ace of diamonds. So, now, for the next phase of the trick, oh, I hope I remember this well, I'm going to cut off a certain amount of cards here, random. And now, I have you guys choose which three cards go out. 
We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 cards. 16 random cards. I give them a shuffle. This is a genuine shuffle. I would have you guys shuffling those cards. Okay. 16 cards. From left to right. From left to right. 1 to 16. Drop your numbers now. Drop your numbers now. Three cards. We need three numbers. The first three numbers. 1 to 16. These are the cards. Oh, we got this time delay, man. So, your comment says four. Leaf Smile says 11. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and seven. Okay, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, your choices, guys, your choices. So here's the deal. I will turn these cuts now around. Bang. 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 Now it comes the magic ritual. I'm going to add the number of cards to get to 10. So from 9 to 10 is 1. From 2 to 10 is 8. From 6 to 10 is 4. Correct? Let's do this. 9, 1, 10. 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 10, 10, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 9, 10, you're with me everybody, now, next magic ritual, we are going to add the values here, and these cards, we're going to count down, so, we got, 6 plus 2 is 8 plus 9 is 17, right? So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And the next card is the card that I'm going to predict right now because I forgot the prediction. I should have written it down on a piece of paper before because of course I know it's the five of hearts. Woo! Is it the five of hearts? Please let it be the five of hearts. Nine! Nine! Where's the Why doesn't it work? Why didn't it work? Where's the five of hearts? Didn't work. I've done everything like in the fucking trick. In the book. Why didn't it work? <laughs> okay, next try. We're doing this once again. We're doing this just the same. So we got the whole deck, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 20. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 40, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 50, 1, 2. Yeah, we got all the cards. What? Why? Couldn't that work? Okay, I tried again. I tried again. I don't get it. I tried again. I'm writing down my prediction right now. <gasps> I'm writing down a prediction. 
not on this. Where do I write down my prediction? On this failure. Strong prediction. Writing down the prediction. So what happened to the music? Wait a second here. Music is gone. Okay, music is coming back. I'm just trying this trick once again. So I got my prediction here on this uh, on this note, and I leave it like this. Where they, that's how they said they sh I should do it in the book. So, again, there we go. I take a bunch of cards. I have three spectators select three cards. Random. Three spectators select in three cards. We do the same game. We say the scorecards value 10. They call cards always value 10. We go up to 10, so we need to eight cards on the two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Four cards, six to ten. King got ten. That's it. We don't need any card. Now we add those. Ten plus six is sixteen. Ten plus six is sixteen. Plus two is eighteen. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. And then the card I'm holding here should match my prediction. My prediction is the four of spades. The four of spades. My prediction. And yes, this time it worked. <laughs> okay, okay, that's a trick. I don't know why it didn't work the first time. So, so this is now a trick that has nothing to do, nothing really nothing to do with the riffle shuffle except for that this can be done with any deck of cards and that you're going to have a spectator riffle shuffle the cards or do you shuffle the cards yourself I don't know yeah the music is super chilling I'm just super loud right now um, and um, Akum Masnow writes uh, these uh, the, the numbers here rem remind me of the old um, of the old role play games. It's like it's really funny. Like um, I think it, you could do something with this, like with this principle. It's just such a shame that this just fucked it up for the first time. And I have, I mean, I just I learned the trick basically before. Uh, this is my excuse. I learned the trick before I started this live stream. I've never done this before, and um, I. I I, I, I don't know. I, I have no clue why it didn't work. So, what what we got to do? We got to memorize the the 34th card, the 34th card in the in the deck. I know I know know what I did wrong. So no, my my idea was the following: if I count down 13 cards, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13. One pile. Okay? And I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Second pile. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 
Third pile and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, thirteen, fourth pile. Now I give you guys the choice which pile you go where. So the first goes, it doesn't matter, this is 13 cards. The second goes, this is 26 cards. And now I did the math problem. I memorized the wrong card because I need the 43 card from the top. So I did it wrong. I'm so stupid. I can't believe how stupid I am. Okay, I have to figure this out the other day because I would perform it like this in order to memorize the 34th card. The second time I did it like it's explained in the Royal Road to Card Magic. We are on the trick um, Ultra Card Divination. So now the music is a little bit loud. On my headphones too. So you have to you have to mem memorize the 34th card in the deck. And the um, the justification they give you in the Royal Road to Card Magic is that you count them cards and that you look through the deck. Um, if all the cards are there, okay? And so what I just did, I went down and went down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30, 1, 2, 3, 4. Eight of hearts, eight of hearts, 34th position. And then I keep on counting down eight of hearts. Memorizing eight of hearts, just pretending there are enough cards. This is the justification they give in the Royal Road to Card Magic, and I just tried to use something impromptu, which failed because I'm an idiot. I memorized the wrong card. So we got the eight of eight of heart and the thirty-fourth card, and now the spectator and now the, the magician cuts a third but not more than 26 cards onto the table, shuffles the cards and have the spectator select three cards, random choice. And you can play it the way you want it. And I did this here with the numbers, right? You remember guys. All the other cards go back on top of the deck. And now we do this kind of self-working routine. We add cards to the value so that they can end up to 10. So 10 and every card above the core cards count as 10. No card goes there, zero card. It takes seven cards to come to a 10 here. So we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. We got eight, nine, 10. This is just a routine. This is just self-working at this point. And then we add these three values. So we got 10, 18, and 21, okay? And then it's the 22nd card. So we count down 21 cards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 21. And this must be the Eight of Hearts. And it is the Eight of Hearts. Now, I don't know why it is the Eight of Hearts. I don't know. <laughs> and they're not telling you in the book. So probably, there, there, there must be, there must be, there must be, now the conclusion to this question is the following. For some mathematical reason, walking through this routine of adding to 10 and counting the core cards as 10, and then adding these values, counting these cards, you always end up counting 
down 20, 33 cards. See? So, Cavalet, now we're, we're figuring out. The thing is, you don't need necessarily, you, you necessarily don't need to know why it works, if you know how it works. <laughs> But here's just how I figure what I'm saying to myself. If you memorize the, the 34th card, you need to end, you need to count 33 cards onto the table. So this principle, this routine, brings you to an end where you always count 30. Where you always count 33 cards onto the table, plus the three one. The spectator select out of the deck. So let's let's try this. Let's try this. Let's try this little theory here. Little theory. So I just take a couple of cards, a bunch of cards, and randomly I take three cards out. And it does now matter in which order I go including these three cards at the end of the process there should be 33 cards on the table okay so we count any core card as 10 10 14 17 let's count 17 cards down 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seventeen cards. Seventeen cards. Seventeen. We need to go to ten. We got the queen as a ten. We need to go to ten. So we got six cards here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we need seven cards here for the tree so we got seven one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven so let's do some math right shall we yeah. seven plus 17 is 24 plus six is 30 plus 3 is 33 thus the card is the 34th card and if we memorized it we could predict the card i don't know how you figure out this principle i don't know i don't know how how this how, how you, you figure out this principle who the fuck figured that shit out but it works so here's the thing, you know, you, now where we are now, we need to understand the principle. We understand the principle, which gives us confidence. I don't know now why it works. Now, this is something where I would go to my math friend. I would show him this and say, why? And he would go, well, this is, this looks like this, you know? <laughs> and it was discovered in the year 928. <laughs> Probably something like this, I get that. Um, Maybe it's something very simple. Maybe it's something when you, I go like, yeah, of course. But for now, I'm satisfied to have tested this three or four times, also going through the routine so that I memorize this. I really memorize this now. This is what's happening. I'm ending up with 33 cards on the table. So I, so when I know the 34th card, I'm done with it. It's 100% honey, badger, strength, and conditioning, right? It's 100% methical. You remove three cards. Those have the value X, Y, and Z. Each between 1 and 10. Then you add to each card 10 minus X, 10 minus, and 10, respectively. And then you deal down Y, X, Z cards. That means you're adding up 3 plus 30 X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> Thank you so much for the comment. For everybody, like, now this is shit. This is already like... Science. <laughs> uh, 
And this music is like, I'm, I'm feeling like a caveman right now with this music. Uh, there was this technology fire <laughs> on crossbow and mathematics. <laughs> okay, so we're getting closer to it. Mathematical principle, getting this routine, understanding the principle, knowing 33 cuts and down. So all I need to make the strict work is a justification, a proper justification, a proper play to get with a random deck the 30 the, the, to get the, to get um, inside of the 34th card right and if you once understood that this is the problem you can, can come up with your own solution how, how how would it work for you best to get a random deck of cards and then how to figure out and um can we turn this into an icon? Well, well, I don't know. I would stick here at this point here with this with this motion, with this moment. Because it's a prediction. I mean, what, it, what an easier version is, for example. You could also do this. Yeah. I don't know. Get to the, get to the 34th card. Memorize it. Justify it. And the Royal Road to Card Magic gives you an option here how to do this. And then go down with this routine. And you come and you have a super powerful prediction. Very, very powerful prediction. But I don't see right now here the use of the uh, the use of the um of the riffle shuffle. Anyways, here's another, maybe one little, uh, little tiny tip here. The emphasis of the emphasis of the whole thing lies on the prediction. So, I, so where you do it? So you go, you can go, you go, you go in pairs of five. I don't know, five, ten. You go to the thirty-fourth card. Um, you memorize it, and you place the cards onto the table. Maybe with with a, with a false card. With a simple table false card. They're on the table. Now it's time to make a prediction. And this is what you play big. You make your prediction. You play this big. Because this is what the people will memorize. And you say this. You can say this here. Clean cards. And these cards now go to, this, to, to you. Random spectator. XYZ. Mathematician. Professor Mathematics. I make, a pro I make a prediction here now. And then you make the prediction. And then you fold it and you lie it there on the table. Or, or you do it like this. I hold it like this. Whatever, you play it. This, this is what you pick. This is what you want the people to memorize. And then you go through the procedure. And then at the point where the card ends up, which is a little byplay, the prediction match, matches with the card. And if you don't have mathematicians sitting at the table, you should be good. Anyways. This is the Royal Road to Card Magic. This is the second chapter here. Or in part one, the second section, the Riffle Shuffle. We're not deep, neck deep, deep, or you say, we're not too deep into the material right now. This is still beginner material, but as they said, and I um, pretty much at the beginning, these tricks are all proven over time as entertaining feats of card magic. Now, if this shouldn't work, um, you shouldn't be too uh, too fast in judging the trick and saying this is a shitty trick, rather than something really work with your performance. For me now, right now, I had a blast of a time um, looking into this, explaining you guys the riffle shuffle, the in riffle shuffle, and the in-air riffle shuffle and the table riffle shuffle and then going through these tricks trying to figure them out. I'm so sorry that the first time this didn't work because I um, uh, mem probably memorized the wrong card. Yeah. If you do this with a shuffle deck, a great excuse 
it to go through the card is to remove the jokers. Yes, for example, it's a classic, uh, the classic move to remove the joker. What do you, you guys think about using your phone to store your prediction? Yes, yes, this, this is great. This is absolutely great. Uh, but how you how would you want to do this impromptu because if you photograph this one card at this point where you where you're counting down the cards or removing the jokers ow oh, oh, well, 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 yeah it could be done like you would, would be go through this you count to this you go like like this and then you go you would go like like here and then photograph it oh, well, how would you do it like I don't know uh, it's a nice idea, you know, to, to to bring it to bring this old thing into the in, into the modern times where everybody has a handy, you know. <laughs> I don't know phone tricks too much. The spectator might think it's an app. Um, yeah, also, but I mean, yeah, yeah. Ri write it down with the pen and the paper makes you look so mystical you know it's like a creature from a different time maybe you're a time traveler it's because believe it or not it won't take long and then there, there there will be folks walking that don't even that 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 lost the ability of handwriting which is a crazy thought So what's going on? We got 11 folks watching right now. Are you guys having a great time? Because I think we did it. I think we walked through the second section of the Royal Road to Card Magic. Do you guys have any questions regarding to what we talked about right now? Also the, the specific handlings of the uh, table riffle shuffle. If you do, now it's time to ask me. Because then, officially, after two hours, the live stream is over. Although I still keep on streaming a little bit. However, then um, I'm going to to um, to practice also more my thing. Uh, you know, just to, to to keep it going, 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 to keep it going. Lol, we just blew up Mary's magic mind. Uh, uh, why nobody blows my mind that easily? It's just, uh, I just, I just, uh, I just, I'm just confused about this delay all the time. Like, I kind of know. So, Kamala says, um, it might be the easiest chapter. The next one is where I have the most trouble. That's a great book. I, I really should be more serious on it. Open a new pack. Uh, feeling good. Akuma Snow. Great, great. N new book. No. So let's 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 dig right into it. Let's let's check this out. What we got? What's the next thing? Let's tease this shit here. Let's tease the shit out of you guys. Um. Flourishes. Oh, we're going to flourishes. So we, we get a display. And guys, I'm telling you, I don't know these flourishes myself, really. This display of the top card, this is going to be fun. Like this thing here, like something like this, like, like, uh, 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 like this. <laughs> it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. So what we got? We got uh, for intimate performances. They call it intimate performances. It's like Valentine's Day performances for your, for your loved ones. Okay. Um. And then we got um, displaying the top card for intimate performances, for intimate B for intimate, for platform performances. And then we got the ruffle with both hands with a single card, the click, spread and turn over. Uh, one a cloth covered table on a cloth covered table on a bare table, gathering the ribbon spread, pack springing the cards, a uh, flourish count, throwing a card. Waterfall shuffle, the fan, one handed fan, thumb fan, pressure fan. Oh hell no for flourishes. Nice treat. Ah uh, no 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 no. Nice treat. This is um. Well yeah, we can take a look at it, but is this going to be a whole? Is this going to be because I did a whole a whole uh, section on, on on flourishes already? I mean, I will go through this. I will read this. Uh, but I think. 
we, I think, are we going to rush through it or are we going to make this very concrete? We're going to make this a very concrete, so prepare yourselves, um, uh, Kabbalet, if you say uh, um, this is the difficult, most difficult uh, thing for you or you have most trouble, what you, we will maybe answer your questions or discuss your questions. I will rush with, but I think I will take the glide in there or the tricks from the glide. Designed for laughter and observation test, maybe. Let's see how far we come next week. I know, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. Right now, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. I wanna do the glide, actually. Anyways, ne it's not gonna be next Tuesday. Next Tuesday, I will be not in Berlin. I will be in Barcelona. Wait, wait a second. I protected you from this. I will not be in Berlin. I will be in Barcelona with my girlfriend, having a little holiday, ho holiday time. So, um, next live stream next week is going to be go down on Thursday night. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night. And then on Tuesday, next week we are back on tuesday so i think i will rush through the flourishes because i already did a whole live stream on flourishes i will just sum this up briefly we'll take a short look at the at the flourishes in the book and then we jump right to the glide and to the tricks from the, gl and, and the glide because they are great. these are powerful tricks and they are really famous designed for laughter and ob observation test what do you think about this is, is this a roadmap so we do this on Thursday um, next week Shadows Magic is back back hey back I think it's smart. Uh, it's smartest to pick the most common flourish instead of taking about all of them. Yeah, well, w w I mean that's a great, great idea, but I, uh, a rush through is not a problem, you know. Like kind of rushing through and just looking at them, giving them a try. I mean, these live streams they already they take some time, and we are already now doing this for two hours and five minutes. So there is time. We have time, you know. And if we don't get through, oh, if we do it again. It doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. But we're going to stick to the plan. We just do what nobody what nobody did before. Okay? We we discover new places in the universe. We're going to follow the Royal Road to Card Magic chapter by chapter. Which no, that this I'm telling you, they wrote it in the in the introduction, and nobody ever did it. <laughs> Except on Mario's Magic on his YouTube channel. And in case if you guys can't catch it, catch up, but you know, these things are going to be up. They're going to be up and running afterwards, you know? And I know you're tuning in. And I know you're making this quality, quality time for yourselves, practicing cards while doing so. So, having said all this, I'm going now to the card table, practice my thing, going back to practice a little bit of, um, of the riffle. A shuffle and uh, and them uh, seconds and um, seconds and 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 and, and bottoms and, and everything. And by the way, one more thing. I was thinking, when we progress here, we can go back. And this is the last thing officially saying about the riffle shuffle. We can go back to the riffle shuffle here, taking a close look at at, at what Erdnay's at Erdnay's system. What you think after we've been through the Royal Road to Card Magic? But it's going to be so rich, and then we're going to go, going to go through through Erdnay's. That would be amazing because Erdnay's is really ca kind of challenging here. This is this is uh, much thinner, but this but there's some badass shit in there. I'm telling you, like kind of where you go like oh oh oh. But maybe. I I I um I started with I started actually with Erdnays. So when I first uh, read Erdnays, I was like, hey, what the hell? What the hell? Well, maybe it's uh, if it's easier for me. And then another great book we can uh, dig dive in or dig in later on. You know, to to to, to get another to, to get yet a, a more in depth um experience or in depth drive on what we're doing right now. That would be expert cut technique by the same author, authors, you know? 
it's a, uh, it's, it's, it's a very powerful, uh, super rich bog. Okay, that's the roadmap. We are doing this right now for two hours and eight minutes. So, because the last the last time I practiced this um, the shuffling routine here, I discovered a very shitty handling which I'm now trying to fix, and which of course blows my cover right now. But eventually I will get there, and, and then it will look so much better from what I did before. It already does. Akuma Snow writes, uh, I haven't, haven't started yet. On chapter 11 of Royal Road. Gonna finish then do Earthness. It's calling to me on my desk. With a good haha -ha in there. Yeah, I know, I know. I know, I know. Sometimes the things they are just, you know, you know you need to go through. You know you need to do them. But never overload yourself. You never do too much, you know, because um, depending on wh where you are in your life and, and uh, what you're aiming at, um, you don't need everything, you know. But having read about it, going, th having read it, going through it, but you don't have to um, practice any technique there, you know. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Thank you all so much for supporting my channel. It is so extremely important these days. Um, it's really crazy on YouTube. Okay, I'm turning the music a little bit up for you guys as I'm practicing here. Flying Wee, thanks so much for tuning in. I'll catch you later. Thanks for the stream out, Marius. You're very welcome. Thank you so much for your support. Take care. Have a great night. Is it the goal of this false card to keep the t uh, card on top? Um, this is not really just a false. Yeah, you could say so. It's not a um, false card, actually. So much. It's uh, it's just me. Ch it's just, uh, ch trying to get this technique at hands. Jasper Jones, you're leaving as well, or you're just saying bye bye to Flying Wee? I conditioned myself to do it like this and this looks shitty so I'm back to doing it like this and now it's not as 
clean as I already had it but this is just a little bit of time I just have to put in the effort of getting this um, of doing this a couple of times a day and then and then a good should be good in no time and also this gets embedded in a, into a whole motion this is just not a cut so it's all right when when it looks like this afterwards yes bang and bang that's some nice music for this vibe for this uh, thing and whoever is following these jam sessions, these live streams, seen me doing this for quite a while now. And you should, um, if you go back, you should see really the um, development of the hands of the motions here. And this shows you, this will show some of you maybe, that sometimes it's quite a journey to get uh, to get really to get to get to create these illusions to create these illusions with a deck of cards But I'm really okay with this right now. It's a little bit of a, a little bit of of work. Yes, I'm enjoying the music right now, and I'm really getting after all this talking here. After I like, I like, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy that, that we make this decision to walk through the road road to card magic because it's really, it's really cool to work with the book and to think about it, read about it, to have this anchor place to navigate through, and then to get into some card practice on a Tuesday night. That's really cool. I go my snow watch the top shot video. Yes, top shot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if you practice it like this on a table, you're not so stressed because the cuts are not falling down. 
so far. We can give it a couple of rounds. Just really good practice for some other really crazy and very powerful uh, card control techniques, actually, and also color changes. Let's see if I can do this now. Yeah, something like this. Um, no. But what, what do we take? We should, a nice card. Yeah, this is, that's a nice variation. So, I um. Ten of ten of the ten 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 of uh, ten of uh, um, um, spades, right? And then you just go bang, and the ten of spades turns into the king of hearts, right? It's a nice one, and this is uh, a nice preparation for this one. The great mistake as a beginner is like, I, there's this um, in the Hagakur. Uh, Bushido, way of the samurai. Uh, there's this, um, there's this nice saying um, that you, uh, uh, that you, that you um, should um, take the easy, that, that you take the big decisions, to handle the um, uh, big decisions. Uh, like this is just, this is not word by word translation. This is just how I remember it. Okay, that you should handle the big decisions like the small one, and the small decisions like the big one, big ones. However, you should m make every decision within se seven uh, seconds or seven times breathing in and breathing out. <clears throat> and the most mistake a lot of um, <clears throat> of people do when they practice skills is that they um, put the um, the uh, the, um, the focus onto the wrong places, onto the wrong uh, things, and. Um, they're trying to, to fix on details, work on their fixate on details at a point where they're not even at close to working on that detail. So, um, in general, before you before you make a, a motion um, super fast um, and super powerful, you need to define this motion, and you don't care about speed and power. At all, so you gotta come from something like this. This is where you are, with your brain, with everything. You gotta get it into, <laughs> into, into, into a flowing rhythm of motions. From ah, that's my brain as a human being. You gotta calm it down and get it get it in mode into motions. And what you wanna do then? You wanna you just wanna have it there, and there's the energy. And then you first of all you gotta come down to this point that you gotta focus like the kind of tai chi with, with and it's with everything the same thing. And bef and then you f you understand the general motion of the whole thing. And when and, and then when you got it, and this takes a long time. This already for some people when they when they when they for the first time get into it. The motion drive they think they're masters of the art <laughs> it's like no 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 there's so much effort in what you do right now still and it's going to be such a long way and uh, mastering it is to actually do it with no effort a thousand times faster and a thousand times harder you know so practice as a Novice at the first, the first practice thing is understand what the shit you're actually doing, and then get the whole notions down, the basic muscles. Don't work on the details too much. And then, when you got the general motion precise, become more and more precise, and then with this precision, you start speeding up things up. But your goal is then to really control the motion in a slow pace as well so you gotta level it back level it and make it get it very 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 slow again and if you can't do it slow it is doesn't matter if you can do it fast because you do not control the motion you ever seen when these big super uh, martial arts guys and these are usually old men 
like really old farts, like 70 plus or something, showing their skill. They got this black belt X plus 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 plus, I don't know. And they're doing their motions super slow. And you're going like, why? What's so impressive about it? Because to perform a certain motion, keeping the same balance and the same pressure and the same power in a slow motion is harder than doing it fast. And believe me, if this Japanese Swordmaster does these motions super slow, there's just all the power in the whole motion, like when he would do it super fast. And when he does it super fast, he's gonna fucking cut you in half. And you don't even, you haven't even done, you haven't even started realizing the situation, you know? And that, that's the difference between mastering something and just being a, um, a random jerk. <laughs> Sometimes I'm so deeply disappointed about humanity. It is unbelievable with what with what we are satisfied. We were like, this is it, this is what this is the best you everybody is okay with. Oh man. It's pathetic. And you can see this when I'm practicing the um, the bottom the bottom deal where I'm still at a point where I am f pushing where I'm I'm actually just training in a certain chaotic motion this the the, the the power play of these two fingers pushing the cards out so there is this practice phase where there is no elegancy where there's nothing where you just see these fingers flashing like crazy down there. But this is a necessary step to, to, to come to a point where the, the, these fingers are so conditioned in the snapping motion that when I put it, when I go, go slower, there is, there, there is the perfect timing and you don't see this anymore. And all of a sudden this, mo this, 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 um, this dealing technique becomes very convincing even in a slow, small motion or t tell me that when I do this, you don't see the card coming from the top, do you? Like this is the slow motion. And now there is the, still this confusion in the hand and the finger snapping because all of these micro, micro actions, they are, they are just not, they are just not uh, uh, accepted as something that just happens. It's supposed to happen. So, so when I come slowly to the point where I do this, and you do not, you do, you do not in this micro timing. You do see the card coming from the top, and I speed this up. You still have this motion where you see yeah, that there is something sneaky going on, because there is still this moment. And now when I do this slow, it appears to be even more difficult than to do this fast. And there are so many things where I say, "What the fuck am I doing? Why?" After all this time, is there so little control? Right? But this is, this is just practice. So when I, when, I, when I practice, right now, a long, for the longest time, I'm in the this motion. Look at this. Look at this. This is basically this stadium. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm doing this live stream and I'm doing this practice thing here, when people are tuning in, just random, you know, because sometimes the, the algorithm that just shows this, there's something going on here. And then 
in his late face with, with his tired hands I'm doing this and then come come in oh, the sending socks you know, I can see these fingers <laughs> and there's no no shit <laughs> Thank you so much, Jokomen. Thank you so much for your support for two euros for t t today's session. Thank you so much. Have to go, keep going, and uh, have a, a nice holidays. Thank you so much. Um, yes, we are going on Saturday. I'm flying on Saturday. We're flying to Barcelona, visiting a friend. My my girlfriend. Uh, she's a um, uh, from north of Spain, from the Basque country, so she speaks Spain. My Spanish is I don't speak Spanish. Uh, uh, and um, I'm really looking forward to um, um, meeting um, a, a friend and also um, visiting this beautiful city for the first time. We're not going to stay long, it's just a till Wednesday, I believe, just five days. And then I'll be back on Thursday with another live stream, with another ch chapter of the Royal Road to Card Magic. I hope to I meet you there. Thank you so much for coming in and um, have a great, great evening, great day, whatever time it is you're in there. Aguma Snow, thank you once again. Thank you so much. Also, for you tuning in and your support, I really, really appreciate it. It's super fun doing this with you guys. Back to the table. Back to a little bit of practice. So, but now the music, music is a little bit annoying me, so I change it. I'm going back to this beautiful tune because this was very lovely. And I'm turning this off. Good, good, good. So this is something very nice. Let's listen to this. I practice some cards. So whoever is still with me, current views nine, views. We're doing this for two, or I'm doing this for two, we are doing this for two hours and 30 minutes right now. I hope you all got a deck of cards out and practice, uh, and make this quality, quality time. Practice and practice. Let's go back here to this crazy, out of control. Shuffle. Now the music is a little bit too loud for you guys. I turn this down a little bit so that you can hear my beautiful voice while I am shuffling the cards. While I'm doing this absolutely crazy. And you see now from this angle a little bit, it's just the finger, it's just the index who, who who's still freaking out. It's, it's like I don't, I don't, I don't understand what is happening here. Leave me alone. Until he's going to be very calm and accepting the new reality. part about um, getting good at something is uh, being real with yourself being true to yourself not not being, being honest honest with yourself it's like what are you actually doing how much time are you actually putting in, in there effort you know what 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 are your real what is your real what what is your fantasy and what are real goals you can achieve you know how much effort would you actually put in in it to fulfill your maximum goal do you have these resources at all? 
or do you want to sacrifice what's needed to be sacrificed for achieving these goals? These are these questions, these, these, these uh, vital questions, these absolutely groundbreaking questions. And if you don't, if you don't a question them, if you don't allow yourself to question, to question yourself in, the, in this manner, you stand no chance in getting in, 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 in really gaining any serious skill. And, and please do not make the mistake um, of thinking that success is the same thing like gaining skill. It's not. There are a lot of extremely successful people out there on a very low skill level. Some of them were just lucky or just, you know, um, are really good salesmen and entrepreneurs. It's a different thing. Also, this is true for many aspects of life. But I'm kind of satisfied. Yeah, this is getting better. This is getting... This slowly, slowly gets into something workable. Very slowly. But I'm... I'm but slowly. <laughs> Did I say slowly? Need to say slowly again. We had a great session today looking into the second section of part one of the Royal Road to Card Magic the Riffle Shuffle. And now we're all with our cards. Everybody busy practicing what they got going for themselves. Which is a good thing. Been doing this for two hours and 35 minutes. It's 11 p.m. German summertime, GMT plus two. I'm broadcasting from Berlin via OBS. on my iMac with a, a nice blinky blinky tastatura and my average Presley microphone no crashes stream quality good from the beginning up until now which is nice we have 140 playbacks with an average view duration of 14 minutes and 48 seconds. Currently seven folks viewing. I don't know what you are doing, guys. I've got my first super chats. Two times 99 cents from Akuma Snow and two euros from Yukoman. That's guys, thank you so much. That 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 was that was a blast. That's a blast. I must know as my webcam sir I've got right now this um, this camera is not a webcam this is a Canon um, pretty uh, an EOS 7D so this is a really good camera which I transferred into a webcam using this sucker here let me see if I can pull this out without ruining this this is uh, this is um, 
a USB capture HMD from a, 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 a company. So this is cable is the camera from goes to my camera and this goes into my computer and uh, this little capture card manages to um, to translate the camera data so that the computer, especially OBS, recognizes this as a webcam. And then I'm using with this camera right up there my um, my Mac uh, my Mac cam, my Mac Inbuilt cam. I have an iMac, which I bought two years ago or something. Especially a machine that I can work with for video editing. Although I'm not editing so much lately because I'm I don't know. I just couldn't manage uh, to shoot all the tutorials I want to shoot. So much stuff going on in my life, and then also it's YouTube is so it's so not motivating me right now because pe people the, you get your content get gets claimed the Europe, European Copyright Directive, and then content content is not suggested anymore. YouTube has dismissed the suggest the the subscription model so so what's the point you know anyways doesn't matter don't want to run on YouTube and the other camera I'm using that is um, this camera here this is a Logitech um, 920p I believe um, which should have been the best price but if I look at it right now my my inbuilt Mac can make some better image here I don't know if it's the lighting or whatever uh, so uh, we got some folks tuning in here right now. We got Harsh Magic. Hi, hey Harsh Magic. What are you doing? Uh, what are the best tricks to do? You think are an expert car technique? As I'm uh, currently reading, can't tell you this. I can't answer you this. Um, these uh, uh, smiles. I don't have all the tricks that are in the in expert car uh, technique um, available. I don't have them. I have. Usually, I. I it's usually it's what. Uh, what strikes you, you know, where you say, hey, this it sounds like a great effect and this is interesting and intriguing and this could fit to me as a person, as a, 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 a performance character. And this is how I would make choices. Today, we have been uh, diving deep into the second um, chapter, or not chapter, our section of the Royal Road to Card Magic, um, talking about the Riffle Shuffle, Table Riffle Shuffle, in air Enhanced Riffle Shuffle, and then we well, uh, took a look at the three tricks in this chapter, very easy beginner tricks. Um, um, I failed to try to perform them, failed with one, but anyways, it was a lot of fun. Um, this all happened before. I can repeat this, of course, now. I'm streaming here for uh, almost two hours and 40 seconds. I'm right now in a practice mode we, i'm practicing here my things right now some doubles um some seconds some bottom deals and some uh, shuffling techniques and so on and so on that's that's what's happening here on the card table you're very welcome to join the practice session get a deck of cards out if you have the time if you're in the right environment and then practice with us listening to some music which is great uh copyright bs bullshit akuma snow uh, i don't blame you yeah copyright bullshit and uh, and yeah, but, but this is one thing. Yeah, right now, right now, it's re right now. It really feels that YouTube is making decisions. That YouTube as a company is making decisions that are really, really just on the side of um, uh, of um, um, of making as much money as possible. I don't know. Which is not. I know. I know. It's a company, and they. I don't know. Have to do it. But I, it, it feels like they're really. It feels like really they're not. They're not with their. With their content creators and this copyright thing this is one thing it's really complicated and difficult uh, but um just on youtube youtube has just dismissed the subscription model so if you subscribe to the channel it doesn't mean that you get um content of this channel suggested whatever you get suggested on youtube and that is everything that shows up on your home screen on your website or that shows up on on the right or below the videos when you watch on um, on mobile these are things that has that that kind of have a mainstream reach you know that have a high reach fitting to your interest profile so you get a lot of clickbaity sensational and trend oriented stuff and um, all these uh, educational channels and um, research channels they're suffering bad they're really suffering um, yeah my channels uh, uh, there's no growth rate on my channel for the last two years to be honest 
didn't grow actually right now and right now if this keeps on this channel is i'm just i'm just uh, drowning but so i decided now to um to really go deep with you guys to really um um so um show more of myself and not doing just these uh, um done and ready products going into these practice sessions answering your questions kind of building a relationship and trying to make the best out of it before very well the the contact contact might uh, might completely disrupt it you know because there's so much data going through the stream it's crazy Odin Fana writes hi I'm your favorite please give me a skin give me a skin Ah, oh, whatever <laughs> back to the table what the fuck a little YouTube rant No, I, was at, I don't. I don't play Fortnite. I have no idea, man. What you're talking about? This is um, a welcome to welcome to the old school world. Welcome to the old world. Welcome to the analog world here in my card channel. You know, we don't play computer games. We have playing cards. These are made of paper. Believe it or not, little cards of paper. Yes, and we do things with them. Crazy things. We make them disappear like this. There they go. It's disappeared. No, no, no. From this side, it is disappeared. And then it comes back. <laughs> so YouTube right now is um, suggesting me on um, on YouTube Gaming and Fortnite and um, and all these uh, <laughs> Fortnite kids coming in and want to have want to want to have a skin. Come here, skin, hold on. Come here, skin, man. I can scan you. I can scan your skin. Let's see if there's any cancer. Look here, Erdem. You say stop anywhere. Say stop anywhere. Stop right there. Look, you stop me at any card in the stack here. Six of spades, right? This is where you stop me at. Check it out. I just turn the cards around once. I snap with my fingers, and then you will find that you will find the six of spades. Oh, it's no, it's the six of diamonds. That was so close. Now check this out. Now I need a little magic, and this is not so difficult because the diamonds, it not, it's not so far away from the spades. Check it out, just like that. Do you see it? Do you see it? It's happening right in front of your eyes, and the diamonds change to the spades. Are you kidding me? Do you know how this works? This works very easy because when I take the six of spades and I place it right there in the center of the pack, can you see it? You see it, it goes in right there, just like that. Check this out. I snap with my fingers once, I snap with my fingers twice and see what's happening. See what's happening? The six of spades lands onto the table. 
and I caught the six of the nine of spades, which is almost like the six of spades, just one tiny difference. It's just a couple of more spades. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, Liv Smarts asks, um, how much inches would you give to the edge of each outjug while doing an after ladder false cut to, bo to be convincingly enough? Honestly, quite honestly, um, it's not about flashing uh, the, the outjugs or the edges. Um, because when you go like this, um, this is straight in front of me, okay? The camera comes from here. So when I do it here like this, you, you don't see this outjugs anyway. It goes fast enough. I would really care. And if, if now the spectator stands a little bit right of me, it, it doesn't matter if I, if I jog it out like this, you would still flash the edge here. And this would be something like this. Or if I outjog, if I, if I outjog it like this, you know? Um, because it is the fluent motion that that makes it work. And this is anyways not a magician's fooler, so you don't worry about the magicians. Think from a layman's perspective. They don't know anything about cards. So if you perform this in this tempo, even with these edges flashing, flashing, this will be this will appear to them as mixing the cards in a very fancy way they have never seen. You know? So of course you wanna you want to um, you want to reach the most elegant handling uh, that's possible in your hands, don't you? Um, so you would aim for something like this. I would aim for something like this. Everything else becomes really every, and this is already really small, you know. Everything else becomes nearly impossible or crazy um, to do it. But you don't need to. You're pretty okay with something like this. Yeah. As long as you keep a natural flow of the motions. And not too fast and not too small. Because if the spectator, you know, gets uh, confused. And the switching of the cards, is, it, this uh, spectator doesn't know about it. So don't worry about flashing the edges worry about a um, fluent casual execution that you can do while talking to the people to the people what I'm doing right now so I'm I'm getting steady I'm talking to you I do this I look down I, I shuff, I'm shuffling the cards basically yeah this is the same with double double uh, lifts and um, uh, other techniques don't be so much afraid about flashing be more afraid about or um, be more con conscious about a natural and a natural appearance, a casual and smooth flow of motions. Every kind of every interruptions, every time when you focus on the cards anywhere, the spectator will follow you with the question, what's going on? You know, and even if you're not flashing, if the spectator gets the idea that he just found, saw uh, that you just um, witnessed a moment where where you did your thing, they think they got behind the secret. They think they know now what's going on. Which, by the way, on another level of misdirection, is something um, um, a little bit more experienced performers really know how to use, you know, these moments to misdirect people. But this is, this is some really clever psychology that's going on there because people notice this. So and when people notice that you bullshit them with shit like that, they really become interested in you and your persona and they really take this as a challenge so this is something tricky you know also i've got a in-depth tutorial on the one-handed fan right there let me give you give myself a little shout out since youtube is not um recommending me here these are all my videos that you can find on my channel okay all my videos and there's a lot of stuff and i've got them on my main page i've got them organized in playlists and you can see here's a playlist of the double lift and um here's some forcing techniques here's the pass i did also some live magic and there is the tutorial on there's the tutorial 
on the one hand fast. Only 395 uh, views two years ago. <laughs> and this is an okay, it's okay thumb f uh, nail, don't you think? You can see my face, it's a funny face. I show those two fans. I don't know why it didn't work. Anyways, you find this uh, there on my channel page. Right now, what can I tell you? You get them cards into this position, and then you put your thumb here at the corner so that you get into this position, and then you just fan them out, and it's like this motion. It's the, like it looks like this. Yes, like this. And this is what you do with the cards in this position. Ah, it's bad angle like this. This is where the thumb goes out like this, and from from the back side. It's like this, like there, and then ah yeah, this angle I want to show you. From here, it's like this. This is how it looks. You just give it, gotta give it a try. On the topic of performing at the table, the the, the pass is something you do always in an offbeat so at a point in two in two ways at a point where from the from the plot of the trick there is no um, uh, um, weight on the cards no interest on the cards and um, you c and people are kind of dealing down cards or you just hand them over some cards and this is where where you can put a pu pull a pass like this uh, because nobody's watching yeah but the pass in a situation where you have tension on the cards um, is difficult and there is of course a variation on the pass um, which is the turnover pass which you can which you can modify into this uh, version. I didn't uh, look now at the card what it is, but it should be on the top right now. So you would have a spectator select a card and then in the motion of turning them cards, squaring them cards at the table, to place them on the table, you would control the card to the top with, uh, with, with this pass. But yet again, look even, I'm not flashing here, this whole motion has a lot of, uh, of unnatural things going on. So, and I am looking at the camera because the camera is not as forgiving as an eye. So, and even if I would address you, this misdirection would be much um, less powerful than it would be in a live situation. So in a live situation, you must imagine that when you have selected your card and when I'm in this position, I would look up and address you. And you would naturally, or I would address somebody, and, and naturally the whole uh, whole um, attention of the table would go to this plant. So everybody is now at the table, and, and as as that happens, I would do this this motion of shuffling the cards, being with everybody. So and and at this point where I'm tapping, the people might actually be focused on the horizontal, go down to the vertical, take a look at the cards, and they just see I'm just tapping the cards, or to place them on the table. So what in their mindset, what they would see is what they would see is really this. What they see would is really this. Cards getting closed. Guy makes like this and puts the cards on the table. I have a little bit more of time wasting as I turn the cards as I as as I as I perform the shift in the motion. But this is so little that would cover with the whole cover of the whole uh, misdirection. When you play the cards on the table to interact with the people, the control is done. Yeah, just have said that. Um, and with the pass, even in standing, is it the same? You can give the pass more cover when you're going, when you when you're going down with your wrists, something like this. Yeah. Now, where am I? Where's the camera? But this is not how you how you work with the pass. Yeah. Oh. 
Um, but once again, if you just care, if you care about this, because I covered this, I've got this on my channel page. You will find a whole tutorial series on the pass and you will find also a tutorial on the turnover. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. The music, music is so loud all the time. I'm really, really sorry. Could you just understand a word I said? Jesus. Almost three hours again. Nine folks sticking with me. That's insane. Where are you guys are watching from? Tuning in from? And what time is it? So Colorado, so you 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 got be something um, mid mid of the day, right? It's three in the afternoon for me. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's um it's eleven thirty p.m. So half an hour to midnight. But no worries. Don't have a tough schedule tomorrow. And I'm actually enjoying myself right now. Again, I have this music in, in my ears. It's pretty nice. And uh, cards feel well in my hands. I mean, look at this. This is so much more relaxed than uh, than before. And now it's it's uh, it's going to be amazing. Just a little time. Just a little time of... of uh, The music is so intense right now. <laughs> what is this? Nice. One, two, one, two. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, baby? It's so funny, today we started uh, and Ro Robert Ballast uh, paid a visit, which was great. And last live stream, Miss Make 822 paid a visit. It's that's so cool. <laughs> like, that's some scary shit to business here. Becoming a magician's uh, magician or what? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> That was some very cool music. I'm just gonna listen to the same thing again because it was so cool. Oh no, let's let's go into this here. Let's try it. Spice it up a little bit.
practicing cards here on Maris Magic. Getting ready for really cool card magic. The real deal. Okay, I just want to practice this little routine. Got four cards in the house. Let's see what we got at the bottom. We got one card at the bottom. That is the. That was the one card I pulled out of the deck. Can it be? It was the nine of diamonds. And I have another nine of diamonds. And I have another nine of diamonds, right? So I have three nine of diamonds plus the one on the table. Anybody with me? So I got one, two, three, four nine of diamonds. One, two, three, four nine of diamonds. Check this out. Because this nine of diamonds actually ain't a nine of diamonds. It is a four of spades. So, and then I got uh, this nine of diamonds. When I rub it a little bit, just like there to drag it up with energy, you will find it is actually a five of spades, which just leaves me with these two suckers here. So we got one diamond and another di nine of diamonds. And with a just a little wave of red, you will find this one turns into the ace of clubs. Just leaves me with one nine of diamonds. That's crazy. That's crazy. Let's do this again. We have one nine of diamonds. And I place it onto the table. We have another nine of diamonds. We have another nine of diamonds. And we have another nine of diamonds. So I'm counting three nine of diamonds in my hands. Plus the one on the table. That makes one, two, three, four cards. One, two, three, four nine of diamonds. Now, uh, the first nine of diamonds easily turns into the ace of clubs, which is insane. And then the second nine of diamonds, with a little energy boost here, turns into the four of clubs. This is absolutely out of control, which leaves me with these two suckers. One nine of diamonds and another nine of diamonds. And just a little bit of magic, and the nine of diamonds turns into five of spades. That's insane. That is insane. I think I'm ready for this one. So, Aleep Smiles asks, how often would you put in flourishes into a routine or how relevant is it to the overall effect? I just would put um, as little as possible of flourishes into routines, you know? But of course, you want to display a little bit of finesse in your card play. But believe me, for laymen, the easiest of things do the job. So a little uh, a ribbon spread, that is, that's enough for laymen, right? Um, a one-handed fan to show a card or have a card selected by a spectator. This is enough of losing the card in there. Yeah, something like this. And if you can, Add this with a control, the better, but keep a low profile, I would say. The spring, the mother of all flourishes, that's a killer, love it so much. And the dribble, of course, it's also very, very powerful, yeah. I mean, um, for example, let's, let's say... Let's say, okay, let's do it like this. No. Shuffle the cards. And um, my goal is now to, to force the, the seven of clubs. Let's let it be the seven of clubs. Okay. Say stop anytime. Stop right there. There we go. Seven of clubs. Isn't that cool? And you lose the seven of clubs right there where it is. Just a little dribble and just another dribble. Seven of clubs comes jumping back to the top. And this is already very sophisticated. So you got their um, force, a pass, and a flourish 
production and it's all based or centered around the dribble and and this is how far I would go you know of course there's this other cardistry style with a lot of happening with the cards and but that's okay also if this is your style and for a certain generation I mean this is a must today for the for the, for the youth but old school in the old school way card magic is very commu communicative communicative and it happens a lot of interaction with your audience and you as a performer you're not so much on your side as um, as a guy who's doing all the stuff um, you are uh, this is really group happening and, and, uh, and um, I must say um, I believe w with the new media and also with uh, already with television and with shows we got today like um, looking for the super talent and 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 uh, and, and in magic something like um, fool us uh, these are formats that are um, uh, counterproductive to the um, to the core values of magic at least to me and if we are studying uh, for something like the the Royal Road to Card Magic in this series here and all the tricks in there and also expert card technique and um, basic stuff you have um, you have um, the first thing you will realize that um, a lot of tricks are actually um, mm, trusting a lot uh, trusting the spectators a lot it seems to be that there that the society uh, magic was performed and people would be more really more um, uh, so socially uh, capable <laughs> also of handling objects and stuff and um, sometimes today um, you meet people that that hardly uh, hardly know know the basics of social interaction anymore like it's really really weird and it's when you pe give people a deck of cards and say shuffle them that they're completely um, uh, overwhelmed with with the with with the focus that's lying on them now and with the situation and people are, are so afraid of doing and i believe this is uh this is the internet and it's the internet uh, people are really afraid of doing something wrong it's i call it the german germanizing the germanizing of the world i call it right now that's hashtag germanizing the world <laughs> um, it's like people are super afraid of um uh doing something wrong getting embarrassed or something because it's the internet out there and it stays forever and back in the days like in the 50s of the 20th centuries in the 50s of the 19th centuries what what happened in a room with people in relationships stayed there or there was so much more in, uh, uh, intimacy how do you say this and, and personal mm. Trust? Could you say in the self? I don't know. It's, it's it's another aspect. Now I'm again at this phase where I'm just getting out with some thoughts, random. So as magicians, card magic. This is an interactive play with people. And you, the better you are, the um, more, uh, the more the people uh, trust the situation to to have a positive outcome for them, so that they invest into the situation and they invest with their personality, and they um, they invest with their interest, and they invest with um, with their charms, with their jokes, with with, with their what with their with what they got, a good magician a good close-up magician is um is mediating a, a group of strangers so that they go like there's something beautiful let's let's do this together now this is this is fun it's ex exciting and if you if you succeed with this um you will have strangers connect with each others over wonders and miracles and it's beautiful it can be really really beautiful Intimacy. Yes, I'm sorry. My, I'm not a native speaker, and I'm eating these things that make my thumb numb. <laughs> Back to the table here for the last final round. We're doing this for three hours and eleven minutes. This is uh, the back end.
Something I have to practice today. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, why not, man? We got we got the music now set, and it's it's. We're listening here, by the way, and let me show you this here before I do, we're listening here to um, to some a great royalty-free music from a, a site called a Royalty Free Planet. Um, and yeah, they, I'm I'm just, this is just all there, whatever it's on there. Let's the next one can be very different. Yeah, you see? There we go. <laughs> Just check out your channel. Do you smiles? I agree. Creating magic atmosphere, something to be a start for. Akuma Snow, what, what's going on with your channel? Let's go there. Marxism. <laughs> That's funny. One video in the playlist of Marxism. Didn't get so far with Marxism, did you? <laughs> Anyways. tend to get preachy at the end of the session <laughs> like and now I got now I tell now I tell you what I but I what I believe is but I believe what I think about the world <laughs> I just took a great distance from social media. Actually, I'm I'm so I'm I'm I, I'm basically left Facebook. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not on Facebook anymore. I just was it was just it was just too much. And I'm also um, I've I got now the same experience with Twitter. Like there's this sensationalism and and, and, and this outrage culture. This re, this it's just too much. And everybody is having this attitude like like um, telling the world his or her opinion about the world like as if as if anyone cares <laughs> as if everyone as is as if everybody cares about what everybody has to say about fucking everything it's insanity it is insanity social media are really really it's not they are not for the best and they're not for they're not even for good they're just driving us insane insane Especially YouTube. I never, I never go to the trending page. I never watch it. If I, if I take just a glimpse of the trending page, it's, it's just, it's just crashing one's fate in humanity totally. It is absolutely, it, every, and every country, every country has their handful, their legion of complete idiots that are extremely successful on YouTube. It is, it is just, it's just so crazy. And there is good stuff on the platform. There is really, really good stuff on the platform.
I think my favorite force is um Um Okay. Ten of spades, you say stop anytime. Stop right there. Ten of spades. I like this one very much. And then the um the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the 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 how it's called the the, the riffle force say stop anytime stop right there very well check it out and it is and then a spade yeah how's my slip cut force doing so again stop right there not so very well <laughs> slip cut force not on the table not on the table. And of course the classic force, right? So what let's what did we what did we do here? We let's like send ten of spades. Ten of spades. Um ten of spades. I would um give a cast couple of shuffles, shuffle de shuffle de shuffle de. And then we want to um to have a spectator pick a card and um would be this one. And this should be ten of spades, right? There are many forcing techniques and with forcing it's the same thing it's the same thing like always in magic you're asking all these questions here um leaves uh, leaves smiles which i which i appreciate um very important questions every question you ask is, is really relevant actually um and it's um and there's uh, in the foundation on the ground if you keep it simple which you should always should do keep it as simple for yourself as the performer and as simple for your audience as possible. Uh, never, however, do underestimate your audience. Um, people are sometimes much smarter than you m might expect. Check out what level your audience is playing with, how far you can go. And, and if you have a real smart audience and you have the ability, well, you can really go crazy. And if not, just keep it as simple as possible. And um, there are these super easy forces, um, like the crisscross force, um, like like the um, butterfly force called or whatever, um, that are super easy from the um, skill level, from a, from a, from a sleight of hand level or the, the handling level. They require, however, a certain amount of boldness, which at the end of the day, every force um, does. So go for the easy ones easy on an easy audience um, and practice your boldness because for forcing for using the classic force for example you have this do you need this entry card to know that you there is no practice but just do it just do it do it do it you know just go just go there this is the card and they, they take this card queen of queen of uh, whatever you want to force them this it's what you do now and then you, um, what is going on? Two of hearts on top of the deck. Say stop. Thank you so much. We got the two of hearts. There you go. All right. Um, very nice uh, force. Um, very simple. Crisscross force. Cut the cards, please. So cuts the cards. And while they do, you say, hey, you did a great job cutting these cards. Or ask them a question, whatever. Keep a moment up and say, you know what? You cut into this shuffled deck of cards right there in the center of the deck. And guess what? It's the two of hearts, right? There's a lot of options. And once again, on my channel page, you find all the answers. I've got tutorial series on all, on all, where's my channel? Tutorial series on all the stuff here on the homepage. Um, here more um, uh, tutorial series I got the forces should be here open it up top five card forces and card magic right there okay
Yes, I think the I think the um the um the overhand um lift force lift shuffle force is uh, really a favorite version, and then the the um is it called the dribble for what is it called? I don't even I don't, I don't even know what it, what it's called. Let me see the full playlist here. Riffle Force, that's the Riffle Force. I like this very much because um, you can cleanly lift the packages up. It creates a beautiful illusion. You are under control all of the time. There's no stress in the heat, in the heat of the moment. So um, all you gotta, you shuffle the cuts anyway. So you wanna go to uh, stop like there, bang, take it out. You go, it's so crazy. So what I usually do, I usually use a combination sometimes. What I do is like, I'm going to shuffle the cards and wherever you stop me, right? Um, there, no, this is how I do it. So I'm going to shuffle the cards and you're going to select the card then out of the deck. Just like that, right? Shall we do this? Okay, are you ready to select the card out of the deck? Focus now. We're doing this in three seconds. Three, two, one, go. Stop right there. Very well. Thank you so much. Let's see. There we go. And it is the two of hearts. Boom. Look at this. Look at this. Jeremy Findlay says, Evening. Just got off work. Sorry I'm late. No, you don't have to. Um, you, have, you don't have to say you're sorry, ma'am. We are today. We're doing this already for quite a while. I'm in my... In my uh, third, we are three hours and uh, 24 minutes, believe it or not. We had a great session. I just give you a synopsis. Size. We've been in the in the um, walk, uh, second section of the Royal Road to Card Magic, the Riffle Shuffle. We had a super fun time. Um, I gave a little crash course on the Riffle Shuffle on the table, all right? And then the in. Air enhanced riffle shuffle. We took a look at this one here, yeah. And then we talked about the tricks. We studied the tricks that are in this chapter, and we found um, one pretty nice prediction trick with a little setup, not not too too uh, difficult for anybody. And then a trick which actually has nothing to do with um, the table riffle, which uh, features a mathematical principle. And um, we had a great uh, great time discussing this. Um, this was almost turning into a Facebook meme, you know, this, <laughs> this people when they, when a uh, Facebook meme and there's this mathematical question, which is a, a kind of super easy and then everybody goes with the wrong answer for no particular reason. This was that kind of moment. Yeah, this is what went down so far. And of course, then now I am um, freestyling, jazzing around and um, shuffling cards. And right now, uh, a new player in the house, um, Lee, Leaf Smiles. I just joined the party and ask a question. I was answering uh, really um, uh, a serious um, and relevant questions of uh, Leaf Smiles. And we, now we were talking about, uh, about forcing cards. And I said my favorite force, my favorite force would be, um, would be the, eight, the eight of spades, the eight of spades. And I would perform it like this. I would shuffle the cards. I would shuffle them even further and then I um, would have a spectator stop me at a random point, right? So really good, which is a really shuffled deck of cards. So you would um, um, would be now my guess to say stop at any point, right? And here we go and stop right there. Very well. So let's check it out. And it is Opala, the head of spades. That would be my um, favorite favorite force Woohoo Now music is completely crazy What's happening? That's a nice flourish. Oh wait, let me do this. Let me do this. Let me do this here. 
practice a little flourishing cards. Can I do this? Does it work? Does the camera even take this? Woo! Practicing cards. Practicing the waterfall flourish here. Yeah, baby. With the microphone in the way. Oh, yeah. What is going on with the music? This is some serious guitar music now on my headphones. Okay, enough of that flourish. How you doing, guys? I'm st I'm still I'm still here. I'm still practicing. Yeah, it's a dribble, practicing a dribble, a little song different camera angles here testing some different camera angles practicing the dribbling but no worries Jeremiah Findlay you can watch all the stuff all the candy we did today um, later on right or how this looks later I'm excited about this new crazy thing here boom dribbling the cards a very, very slow anaconda right there in front of your eyes. Yes. Back to the car table. Back to the car table. Back to the second section of part one of the Royal Road to Card Magic. Shuffling some cards here. Like a crazy person. And now it's midnight. It's ghost hour in Berlin. On a Tuesday night. It's not Tuesday anymore. It's Wednesday now. It's Wednesday now in Berlin. It's one minute long Wednesday already. Can you believe that? And now the music is gone to pionic, piano, piano music again. Inspirational piano music. And I'm almost flowing with the music and saying these inspirational things. Like. Look at this, these cards, they do what they want. It's not acceptable. That is not acceptable. Right there. Okay, guys. Right, all right, guys. We're doing this. We did this today for three hours, 31 minutes, and 32, 33, 34, 35 seconds right now. 
My name is Marius, and this is just what I do. It was a blast of a time. Thank you all so much for your time. Thank you all so much for your support. Thank you for your questions, for your engagement. Thank you so much for liking, for sharing my videos, for staying tuned, for coming back, and for the first uh, two or three super chats today here. That's amazing. I also got a presence on Patreon. You find this in the info cards and links. Check it out. You can follow me on Patreon without becoming a Patreon immediately. Um, I will uh, the other day upload a video there where I explain what's going on on YouTube and why it's so hard these days being a YouTuber with a resource channel that's what a channel like mine is called a channel where people educate other people and do tutorials and so on and building a relationship an actual relationship with people instead of targeting the, 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 the masses with, with trend oriented gossip and, and drama and stuff right and said uh, building a relationship with, uh, with quality content um, based on the goal, the common goal of learning a specific skill set or um, educating ourselves in a specific field or area. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying. This is happening here. My channel, focused on card magic, sleight of hand based card magic for parlor, uh, but even more for intimate one-on-one -on -one or small groups, close up situations. That, that's, what, that's, what, that's what I'm doing here. I had a great time. I got to go now because I'm super tired and um, thank you so much. Thank you all so very much. You be sure, you'll be very, 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 very sure that more magical stuff is going to be uploaded very, very, very soon. And until then, you do what you love to do most entertaining people with just an ordinary deck of cards with some crazy tricks predictions revelations impossible positions whatever you know thank you so much this is it for now see you next thursday same time and then next tuesday cheerio Oh, Mario's magic. magic.